minute. What's going on? Is this the wrong video? Why am I wearing Christmas stuff? Oh, oh, that's right. I decided to put out a mega video of Christmas decomash only wreaths. Yes, I know. It's going to be 20 Christmas and winter wreaths and there's going to be a bonus. Wreath number 21 is going to be a New Year's wreath. This is one of my favorite wreaths I've made because it's just so simple but beautiful and just perfect for the new years. I hope you stick around. The video is long. You can stop it, continue it later, but I hope you enjoy it and I hope you reminisce of some old and new wreaths. Some of them you may have seen not too long ago, but I thought, you know what, let's just get into that Christmas spirit. Without further ado, let's get started. Here it is, my sweet friends. It's the star wreath form. I decided to do a white star, and this is what it came out to be. And when I paint my uh, wreath forms, I really take it easy. I just gave it one quick coat of this Rust-Oleum white and then just sealed it with some clear enamel. That's all I do for all my wreaths, um, whatever color I need them to be. To start off with, we are using the Nadia method and we're going to use five of these deco mesh rolls. Let's get to the basics here. I'm going to be using this Dollar Tree deco mesh that's six inches in width, five yards in length. We're going to be cutting our mesh into 12 inch strips and that's going to make 15 bows per roll. Before we get started on the bows, I'm going to grab some chenille wires. I cut these into four inch pieces. I also fold these in half, so then I just grab it and put it around my bow. Let's get started on our bows. I have my 12 inch strip right here. And since when you're cutting these, they kind of tend to roll onto themselves. I'm just going to walk it out from the inside until it's overlapping about inch, inch and a half. Then I'm going to pinch both sides and then just holding them straight go down right in the center with one hand i will be holding on top right here with the other one i will be walking kind of squeezing all of that in bringing all that in and walking it up this is my smooth end so i'm grabbing my pipe cleaner and just going over it and tightening it in the back giving it two tight twists so the cool part about these bows is the fraying stays on the inside of the bow on one side and the other side we have on the outside but we have it all tightened up so when we turn around there is going to be no fraying because it's all locked in with our pipe cleaner and i have all my bows and i decided to fill in the second and the third row because these are going to cover this row really easily one section is done and in each row i have four on the second and four on the third row and i'm going to put the fifth right here on that tip and what i'm going to do to make sure that it kind of sticks up is i'm going to put it through and then just loop it under any of the wires right here so it stays in place all right you guys and here is the completed star i used up five and a half rolls of the white deco mesh here is how i have it in the back in each row in the middle i have three here three here and then in the corners i have one each so it's one in this connection then three in the middle one three one three one three and this combo is going to work for the second and the third row so in the third row i have one two three and then fourth is here and then right here also and then one two three and then the tip again i decided to decorate this with some picks from walmart and these are dollar 48 each and they're pretty but i do not want to use this pine cone now you can rip it out of there but if you don't want to rip it like i don't because you kind of i want to make sure that it stays together what you do is you just unscrew it because these pine cones are held by this wire 
that's going around look at this and I just removed the pine cone without hurting the actual pick and then I'm just going to wrap this around and I'm going to do the same thing with this one and what I'm going to do because it does have these little clips right here I'm going to clip it to one of the wires as you can see I clipped onto the second row right here and then here to hold it in place you just wiggle it around deco mesh will do the job to keep it in place in the center of this i want it to look like this little owl is sitting on this beautiful branch full of berries this owl is from walmart it's dollar 98 so let me take the tags off first and as you can see this is an ornament i'm going to remove this part also on here to attach it i'm going to put a wire through the back like here's the side of my owl it's going to go like this and I'm just using an awl because this is all made of styrofoam. Now I'm grabbing a 20 gauge floral wire as I'm going to push back a little bit. And I'm going to stick it in there. There you go. And it went straight through. In the front you can't see. But I know that my owl is going to be nice and secure. And now I'm just going to go around my greenery here to sit him in place. And then I'm going to take one end and secure it to the star. I just twisted it. Do the same thing just on this side. The leftover piece of wire I'm just going to put around my star. And I made a little loop right here to hang the wreath. to do is I want to shorten the rim of the hat so I'm going to take it right here where the hat kind of ends and this section right here I'm going to fold it in half and these fold fairly easy I mean I'm not I'm not Superman I promise you and I'm just doing it by hand and I kind of twisted it and I went underneath a little bit we're going to cover this section so don't worry about it if there's any flaking of the paint flake it off because uh we're going to paint this bottom section and i'm going to do the same thing here and now it's starting to look a little bit more of a santa hat it's not as wide next i want to shorten the hat so here is the tip here is the second section i'm going to take it in half right here and just bend it and i know i'm making it look a little weird but proportionally it's starting to look more like a santa hat we know Santa's hat is red on top and white at the bottom and this is just too dark if I'm using deco mesh or even if I'm using felt to cover this area I would still spray paint it or at least paint it. I'm going to spray paint it with paint and primer by Rust-Oleum. Just give it one coat. It's going to be fine because it is the background. It's not like it's going to be right in front of us. And then I'm going to seal it with this clear gloss by Krylon. And that's it. And I will be right back when this is done. Today we're using the woodland ruffle method and we are going to use two to three of these rolls of deco mesh. And I'm going to start by opening one up and let's go over the numbers so these rolls are five yards and we're going to cut strips of 22 inches this will give us eight of these strips per roll all right let's start doing the strips starting all the way at the edge and i'm going down to 22 inches pipe cleaners i'm going to cut these into four inch little strips to get started on our ruffles i'm going to need a pipe cleaner the deco mesh roll something heavy and a little clip or clothespin we're going to unroll it but this time when i'm unrolling it i want it to kind of naturally curl in that's where i'm going to put my something heavy and push it up on this end i'm going to just let it naturally curl and then i'm going to give it at least three little rolls this is going to prevent the fraying then i'm going to clip this part there you go switch that around and then i'm going to start curling on this side 
one, two, three, and maybe four. Now I'm just going to bring it together. Take my clip off, grab my pipe cleaner, and right in the middle, I'm going to give it two twists, and there you go. Next, I want to make a little line right here. You can do this with wire. You can do this with, with whatever you want. I decided to do it with some pipe cleaners. So I'm grabbing two pipe cleaners, and I'm going to twist them a little bit to make them stronger. And I'm just putting my pipe cleaner right there where the V is and right in the center. And I'm just going to twist this. There you go. Then a third pipe cleaner. I'm going to make this even stronger. I'm going to go in the center, twist it. So I just connected it right here. And now I'm going to go on the back side. And then here I'm just going to go back to the front and then twisting it. And look at this. This is so strong. And all I did was use three pipe cleaners. Two pipe cleaners went horizontally. One went vertically to kind of seal this in place. And that's why I started by locking it in here and then just going back and forth and then just finishing off in, in the center. And there you go. Nice and strong. Now we have three rows. Now this is two rolls worth of ruffles, which means I have 16 ruffles right here. And I'm just going to start by putting the ruffles on the end and just kind of working my way inside. All right, the bottom part is done. I'm going to show you what I did and how I arranged everything. Now, before I get started, the most important thing to remember is I did not put anything right here because this is the part that kind of goes up. And if you put any deco mesh here, it's going to make like this dome right here. And that's what you don't want. And that's the reason that I actually uh, made this third row in the middle here. You can do this any way you want, as many of these as you want. I ended up using almost four rolls and I ended up using 14 puffs on each section here. Starting at the end, I put three on each side right here. So total of six in this V section right there. Then I put two at the bottom here and then two right here. I put one in this section right here and one in this section right here and two right here. So two, 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 and then one, one, three, three. This sounds a little complicated. Don't worry about it. Just put as many as you want right here. The only thing to remember is not to put any on this part that's kind of going towards the center on top. Everything else, just fill in however you want to. For this top part, we're going to be using one of these Dollar Tree Santa hats. And there's different colors. You could do whatever you want. And I'm going to grab my little tool to remove the seams there's usually two of these that are holding the white part up and i want to keep as much of this red as possible so i'm just going to look at this it's dollar tree so it's not like it's the strongest over here but i'm going to grab this seam and i'm just going to take this seam out i'm telling you it's not really the most secure seam in the world so this really should be the easy part here Okay, now I have this upside down. The first thing I did was I turned these little corners in a little bit. And then I'm going to put the hat on. You want to make sure that the seam is in the back. And what you can do is you could just hot glue it right there. But I'm going to give it an extra security kind of thing. I'm going to grab some floral wire. And this is the 26 gauge from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to put it through my hat right here. It goes in really easy. And then through this top portion right here. This is just to put it in place. Grabbing another piece. I'm going to, same thing, put it through. And I'm going about an inch in, I would say. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to make sure that this hat 
is as white as possible because we want to make it look like Santa's hat, not, not a witch's hat. So it's kind of important to keep the sides right here as short as possible. Now that our hat is in place, I'm going to hot glue the edges right here. If you can't get any of the red right here and hot glue it, I would too. Grabbing another strand of the floral wire, I'm going to put it through our hat right here. And then it's a 26 gauge wire. So we're going to be able to hide it even in the back right there. It's going to be fairly invisible. See, right there. So our little topper is in place right here. And then grabbing a floral pick. This is from the Dollar Tree. And Dollar Tree has so many. Here's another one you can use that would look beautiful with the red and white. And maybe an apple. And I just thought the apple would be a little too dark and blend in. So I decided to go with this one. Grabbing my floral wire, I'm going to go right in the back in this middle section and twist it. Then I'm going to see where I want this to be. And I want it to be kind of on an edge. I want the poinsettias to show. I want this little silver. The greenery is what's going to make this look really pretty because of the red. And so just put it in where you feel like it's going to look pretty and we can attach it there later but for now let's just see where we need to attach it in here there you go look at this it's nice and secure in the back a few twists here with my leftover pieces of wire i'm going to secure this ending of the pick and secure that in place twist 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 and now the pick is secure right here at the end and in the middle to hang my wreath, I grabbed my 26 gauge wire, cut off a long piece and folded it in half. I'm going to feel the bar right here and I'm going to kind of squeeze it with my fingers. Probably should have done this earlier. There you go. But it was fairly easy to get it through. Just make sure you're in the center. And now I'm just going to twist my loop and then kind of face it the other way and twist it back. I basically went like this with the wire so it kind of loops and holds it in place. Then turn it around and you have a hook right there. Now I'm just going to move the pick pieces around making sure that whatever I want to stand out stands out move it around. The leaf I'm going to turn that around. There's my pine cone and I think this is an absolutely beautiful wreath. Today I'm going to be taking the snowman wreath form from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be making a snowman wreath. I'm going to be using some deco mesh but the technique I'm using is super super simple and it's definitely for beginners. The only complicated part about this wreath is going to be the way I do the hat. Other than that this is going to be super super easy and you guys are going to love working with deco mesh for those who don't. I promise. This is going to be so much fun. Let's get into it. We are going to start by doing the hat. And what I wanna do is I wanna make this part right here a little smaller. And I'm going to be using this tongue depressor as my little mark. Just making the mark where to bend. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to grab these tongue depressors and we're basically going to build up a hat. I just want it to be stronger. It's not necessary because we are going to put felt over it, but I just want that extra strength on it. And I'm going to start with this bottom one.
where the sticks are, that's going to be my front and where the wire part is, this is going to be my back. So just keep in mind when you're positioning them to see which way you want your snowman to go. The first thing I'm going to do is cover this area. And this area is basically the width of a tongue depressor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of going right along the edge, I'm going to go in just a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch. And I'm just using a blade and I'm just running a blade through. That's it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give just a little bit of hot glue right there on the edges so I can pick it up. So what I'm doing is I'm literally just bringing the ends in, kind of folding them in, kind of like this is folded. Just bring them, just fold them in and just bring them over. See how I have these bent, like bent right here. I'm going to bring them over. And if you have anything sticking out, this is why you just use your little tongue depressor. A little bit of glue. And then I'm using my tongue depressor to push it in. Nice and smooth edges. I'm going to give it just a little bit more so I can fold over. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hot glue the edges right here. And so I'm going to hot glue. going to need these deco mesh rolls from the Dollar Tree along with some of these fuzzy sticks. Just going to take a few of these and cut them in three. We are using the bubble method so I'm going to start from the middle and then I'm going to make my way around. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring some mesh together. Grab our chenille wire and I'm going to twist it right at the crossing right here so it's nice and secure. Basically, we're going to put as many bubbles as we can so until we don't see the wreath anymore. And we are going to be actually making really small loops here just because this is a snowman. This is not supposed to be super big. I'm going to be using four inch loops and I always loop up. So the middle is up and we're going to measure from where our chenille wire is to where I'm grabbing one, two, three, four inches, grabbing it, bringing it in, grabbing another chenille wire, and I'm going to tie around both of these rings. Starting where our attachment is, we're going to measure four inches, loop in, grab a chenille wire, do the first twist on the dec deco mesh and then bring the loop in and tie right there. Well, once you started, make sure that your snowman hat, that this is the back where it needs to be and that you're working from the front. I finished one section and I really packed it in really, really tightly. So I made 24 inch loops. You could probably get away with 15, but I wanted this to be really full. And I'm just going to continue going around. So I'm just starting right there. And I'm going to measure off four inches. Tie it first on the deco mesh. Make my little loop. And then tie it to the actual wreath. Okay, now we come to this part. And don't forget that this part is pretty much covered. Meaning the second ring is kind of attached right here. No worries, we are going to attach to the inner ring and just continue working like we were working. I'm grabbing some of this ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to hot glue it to the back. Okay, now that I have that glued, I have a piece of greenery from one of the Christmas bushels from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to just hot glue it with sticking out of the hat. Cut another piece. Now I'm grabbing a tie. This is a garland tie from the Dollar Tree because I do want some greenery there. You like to be here too. It's Christmas. Now I have some berries. Drinking hot wine by the fire. And then I want to put a pine cone in. I think I want to frost it up. Some kind of love, my friend. I'll pray there you go. 
just like that. Do you like to be okay, for the little arms, I got some sticks. And I'm actually going to follow exactly what they have here. And then two little ones right here, maybe something like this. There's nobody at the door. You said I wish this will never be over. Darling, it's time for your present. Come over here. Now it is time to get out in the snow. Lighting a life with you. Choirs will sing and the joy bells will ring. Nobody loves you as much as I do. It's a wonderful feeling from floor to the ceiling. It is that time of the year. Drinking hot wine by the fire. Alright, so today I'm using this tiny little 8 inch wreath comparing to the 14 inch wreath that we usually use. Uh, this is going to be for a sweet little girl and I'm very excited to do this. Here is the little mini mouse that I'm going to be using. Then I'm going to be using this ornament. I'm just going to be using three rolls, two white, one pink. And then you need some sort of a either measuring mat. This is not really, really necessary. And some chenille uh, wires. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these in half. Now, usually when I'm making like the curly wreath, I cut these in three. But today we're going to cut in two just because of, of when we're bringing the deco mesh together. It it is more comfortable to be using it um, when it's in half. Okay, so we got that. And then let's start on this Minnie Mouse. I just wanna open it and, and see how I can work with it. And I'm really hoping this is going to work. All right, so this part is rubber, just like I thought. And this part is really, really glued on. So it looks like I might be using my cutters right here. Oh, this is not bad, you guys. Not bad at all, just using these guys. And I think I'm just going to cut them in. And what I'm trying to do is trying to remove this sharpener away from the Minnie Mouse. So please, please use caution because you are just jamming this in here so all right and i have my intact mini mouse right here that is going to go right on the snowflake okay so let's just finish up the ornament so that way we have it ready at the end before i put my little mini mouse on top of my snowflake i am going to grab another piece of chenille and i'm going to hot glue it in the middle right here let me make sure i have my middle i'm going to use this chenille piece to uh, attach to my little wreath a little later. And so on top of it, I'm just going to twist it so it stays in place while it's drying. And then on top of it, I'm going to put my little Minnie Mouse. I'm completely in love with this sweet little Minnie Mouse. Uh, you are going to need three rolls of deco mesh from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be using two whites and one pink. I want this to look more, more bright and pretty. And I wish the pink was a little bit lighter, but that's the only one the Dollar Tree had. So we are going to do one of the easiest wreaths you can possibly do. And that is the one where you just roll out you put one, and then you roll out a second one, which is my pink. And then on top of that, you're going to roll another white. If you're starting out in working with deco mesh, this is the wreath for you, or this style of wreath. And so I'm going to start by just securing one I usually use zip ties for this, usually, because I just feel like it can have a nice, secure 
um, you know, tail with this, but we are just going to be using this chenille wire. And now I'm going to attach it to this little crossing right here so that it stays in place. And I really want to make sure it's secure. I don't think I need to have a more than six inches. I just, yeah, I think I like that. Another six inches, gather, bring it together and tie it in the back in the middle row. So I'm done with one section. If you look in the back, I know I'll make it all pretty later. There's three sections in this wreath. I'm only done with one and I did eight loops, six inches each and I still have enough to do the rest of it. If you are going to use this technique on a 14 inch wreath, you are going to need six of these because uh, three of these are going to be enough for half of the 14 inch wreath. Okay, so you could ideally, if you wanted to leave it at that and then add your snowflake on top and it's going to look actually pretty sweet. But I do like to open mine up. That's the whole point of doing this technique. And all I'm doing is unraveling and bringing that pink out in the middle. Now you can choose to either do the pink on the side, pink here. I'm just actually going to keep the pink in the middle of my two white um, pieces just because it's going to be a beautiful balance. So one white is going to one side and the other white is going to the other side and the pink is going to be in the middle and especially that this wreath is so small it's going to look pretty i fluffed it out and we have the white in the center then pink and then white on the outside and this turned out so super cute now i'm going to get my centerpiece and as you remember we attached the chenille wire on first and that's because we're just going to feed it through here Let's turn this upside down. And I'm just going to attach it to probably this inner one. I don't want it to be too tight either. And then the same thing on the other side. You could definitely leave this wreath as it is. I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to grab these pom-poms. I'm going to start with these medium size pom-poms and spread them throughout the wreath. And because I know that's not enough, I am going to make take the really, really tiny ones because there's quite a bit of those. And then very carefully, don't hurt yourself there, just hot glue these in various places. Okay, I feel like I have enough of the white little pom-poms on here. And the reason I did this is because the bow on the mini has little polka dots and it just brought the whole wreath together and I do think it looks super super cute what do you guys think now it is time to get out in the snow lighting a light with you I have been waiting to do this wreath this whole season. This little snowman has been staring at me. He is so adorable. And we are going to be using the woodland method. All the supplies for today's wreath are from the Dollar Tree. We're starting with the metal wreath form. It's 14 inches in diameter. Then we are going to be using six rolls of deco mesh. You're also going to need these chenille stems or pipe cleaners. And if you're going to cut them in half, you're going to need 24 of them. If you're going to cut them in thirds or four inches each here, you're going to need 16. And our main guest of honor, of course, is our little snowman. And yes, I got this one from the Dollar Tree. Before we start cutting the mesh, let's go over the numbers. Each deco mesh roll is six inches by five yards or 180 inches. If you take 180 divided by 22, that's the length of our strips, you're going to have eight and a little bit of change left over. From each one of our mesh, we're going to get eight strips or eight ruffles. Plus, we're going to have four inches to play around with. 
Next, I'm going to be cutting my pipe cleaners and I'm going to be doing them in thirds. And as I said, you can do them in thirds or in half. Then I'm going to grab my pipe cleaners and fold them in a little V shape, just like that. Now I'm grabbing my deco mesh and I'm going to cut it into 22 inch strips. Now it's time to make our woodland ruffle. As you can see, my deco mesh is rolling in naturally and I'm just going to find the edge and start rolling it in at the end. Maybe you wanna give two, three little curls. You just want to make sure that that ending is nice and secure. I decided to give it one extra one just to make sure. Then grabbing our little clamp or our clothespin, just clamp it in the center. Turn it around and just put something heavy right there so it's easier to work with. On the other end, we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to start rolling in a little curl, maybe twice, maybe three times. As soon as I have my curl, I'm just going to hold with my thumbs right here and start walking it in kind of accordion style. Just bring it in, get rid of the weight. Keep on bringing it in. I'm going to turn it this way so the smooth end is right here. Grabbing my pipe cleaner, I'm going to bring it in. By this time, you're going to have about half an inch to an inch right here because the way we brought it together because of the accordion style. So what I like to do is I'm going to put two fingers right here and I'm going to pull it up just like that and then give it two twists. And then all of a sudden you see this little ruffle just pop. And I think it's going to be so beautiful. Let's do another one. Starting with the edge, I'm going to make my first little curl. I'm going to go in one, two, and three times. Oops, I, I think I wanna go one more on this one. It looked a little loose. All right, pinch in the middle right here or clamp. Turn it around, put something heavy so it's easier for you to work with. And then we're going to start the curls on this side. And I think that one looks good actually. Two thumbs in the middle and let's start walking it up. And if it's a little, you know, if you're not going in a straight line, don't you worry about that. That's why it's a ruffle. It's all right. As long as the ending right here that is centered, we're bringing into our thumbs. So the beginning and the end are in the center. So this is our top side. This is where we brought it together. So I'm going to pinch it right here and put it upside down. This is the smooth part right here. Pipe cleaner right there. And as you can see, it's pretty thick right here. So I'm going to grab it on this side. With this hand, I'm going to push it back and then twist it and that's going to give it a nice secure uh, little hold on there and there you go your perfect little ruffle now i have all my ruffles cut up and ready to go this is the way i'm going to put them on my wreath form in each section there's going to be eight ruffles and i usually like to go in a zigzag instead of going row and then row because i feel like when you're going in a zigzag it kind of interlocks as you're going with each one and it just gives a beautiful flow to your wreath the nice thing about the woodland method is it gives this fluffy kind of a wreath and i think it just turns out so beautiful now if you know me you know i like my backs to be really pretty after I twisted my first little ruffle on here, what I'm going to do is with the remaining tail, I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to fold it back nice and clean. Now I'm going into row two. And do you see what I mean, how it's fitting in? Now I can cover this little area with this one, then row three, and there you go. There's the first section all done. Look how fluffy and beautiful it is. I absolutely love how this wreath is coming out. Now I'm going to go and fix all the little back tails here. All right, it's all done, no scratching. All of the little endings are hidden in the back. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this whole wreath and just look how fluffy it is. I'm very, very happy about how it's turning out. Now for the snowman. 
This is an extra step, but I feel like I need to secure the outside because it's brown and white and black and this, you know, brown on the outside. So one way I do that is I just color the edges. So I got my white, black, and red here. And I'm just going to go on the outside where the black is and paint it black and where it's white, white, and where it's red, we're going to do red. That way, no matter how somebody sees this wreath, from what angle, you're not going to be able to see this side and it's going to look professional. It's not gonna look like a little Dollar Tree sign. It's going to look good. And our snowman is all dry on the sides here. And I like to do this extra step because no matter how high or low your wreath is going to hang, this snowman is going to look good, professional, and it's not going to have that cheap cardboard on the side. Now grabbing two pipe cleaners, I'm going to fold them in half, but I'm going to do two fingers right here. I make this little kind of uh, like a little seat. And here's the reason I do this little two finger thing right here. I put it on here and then cover with more hot glue. And trust me, this is going nowhere. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. Now I'm going to show my little Amazon order and I'm going to link this in my description box below. And you can also find this in my Amazon store. I got a little bow maker here and it comes with three dowels here. I'm just going to be using two for now. And I'm going to just put it in the middle and in this first one, because I don't think I'm going to need it to be that thick. Now I'm going to grab a pipe cleaner and lay it just like this. And now I'm ready for my ribbon and I'm going to be using this 2.5 inch red ribbon from the Dollar Tree. First thing I like to do is get rid of this folded end. And then I'm going to measure off 12 inches, so side to side, because it's six right here and then six inches right here. And I'm going to put that right in the middle. And then this is the part where we decide what kind of bow we're making. And I think we're going to just, we're not going to make anything too big. I want five inch loops, so 10 all together. There you go, five this way. You know, I think it is on both sides. It is a double sided ribbon. Yeah, so we don't have to twist anything on those double sided ribbons, nothing. You just go in and out. So five inches, five inches. Then you can either do a buffalo check ribbon on top or this white grow grain one. I'm going to go with the white grow grain one just because there's so much buffalo check on the wreath. I want it to be nice and clean. I'm going to measure off 12 inches here. And we're going to do the same thing except instead of five inches, we're going to go a little smaller to four, maybe three even inches, maybe three and a half. There you go, that looks good. Let me peek right here where it is. Three and a half. Making sure it's nice and even. Then I'm going to grab my pipe cleaner before I even take it out and just kind of hold it so it holds in place. And I'm going to take it out Move to the back and give it two twists. Okay, and now we're going to bring everything together. My snowman right here, place him where I want them. And I want him to be a little lower than centered to be in the bottom right corner right here. So I'm just going to attach him to the actual wreath form right now. When I'm attaching my signs, I tend to go really light, so I'm not attaching really, really too close. I'm just going to give it two twists right here, very kind of lightly. And then I'm going to go back and see where I want it. Then I'm going to go back right now and give it more twists. All right, so the reason I wanted my snowman to be a little lower right here is because the bow is going to go on top and we kind of want to have a beautiful balance here. With a bow, figure out where you want it to be. I think that's about right here. And then attach it, and now just open up the bow. For the center of the bow, you can either grab a piece of red ribbon and put it around, or you can grab one of these little puff balls, and I'm going to grab the red one, and I'm just going to hot glue it to the center. It's going to look so darn cute. 
For the tails, I'm going to do little dovetails here. And then we're going to make a ribbon uh, tail. So right here, halfway through, I'm going to fold it up, pinch it, put my fingers right underneath here, and pull it back. There you go. Same thing here. This is grow grain ribbon, so you can't really do the banner tails with this one, but I am going to just cut it down a little bit and make dovetails on the ends. Let's get started on our glam wreath. I'm going to start with four rolls of deco mesh, and this is the new one that I've seen at the Dollar Tree, and it's this ivory with some gold in it. Very elegant. And then we're starting with 18 of these pipe cleaners. So the magic number for today is 18. We're going to be doing pretty much everything in 18 because we're going to have 18 connections on our wreath form. Before we get started, let's go over the basics. This is a 14 inch metal wreath form from the Dollar Tree and it is 14 inches in diameter. It has six sections. In each section, we're going to put three of these pipe cleaners. Here's one section right here. We're going to put one pipe cleaner on the second row, and I count my rows from inside out. And I'm just going to find my center and give it one twist. In row three, we're going to put two on both sides of this middle one. And that's it. We repeat this process in all of our sections, and then we are ready to attach our deco mesh. So as you see, one in the second row, and in the third row, we have two just like this. All of my pipe cleaners are on my wreath form. Now it's time to unroll my four rolls. I'm going to be unrolling them where they're rolling in because we are making loops. So let me just layer them. Okay, I have my four rolls just stacked one on top of the other. And now I'm just going to gather it about an inch in. There are two ways you can go about attaching the deco mesh. You can start from the outside and make your loops on the outside. And when you come to the last one, you hop on over to the middle one and then go all the way around. I like working from inside out because when it comes to locking it in at the end, it's just easier to work on the side of the wreath versus uh, trying to kind of work on the inside. That's just how I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on row two. That's my inner one. And then every nine inch loop I'm going to attach. And then when I come to the last one, I'm going to hop on over to this one, not the next one in here. I'm going to hop on over to this one and then I'm going to go all the way around and complete the wreath itself. All right, let's start. I'm just going to open it up about an inch in. I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to give it two good twists. I wanna make sure it's nice and secure. But then I am also going to grab a zip tie and attach it with a zip tie. I'm going to do this in the beginning and also at the end just to make sure my wreath is secured really well onto my wreath form. As I said, we are attaching every nine inches. So here, the white square, the white middle square is eight inches. We're going to add one more and I'm going to do nine. So I'm going to go from the white and as you can see, all my deco mesh is rolled in this way and it's all facing the same way and so our loops are going to be beautiful so starting with the white i go to the white and then one more square to take us to the gray and then that's going to give me nine inches and i'm going to make my first loop I'm just bringing it down 
and then two twists. The next nine. I'm going to repeat this process all the way around on row two, and then we'll move on to row three together. Here we go. Last loop in row two, and we're putting it right on top of where we started, and that'll complete our row. Nice and tight there. And just do two twists. Okay. And now we're moving on to row three. This is where our attachment is and we finished and here's our little section. And of course we have two of our pipe cleaners in row three. We're not going to touch them. We're going to move on to the next section and take this first one in this next section. This is going to keep our loops more on the even side. So let's get our nine inches right here. And then I'm moving on to this third row right here. Now I'm just going to go all the way around just like I started and we're going to do two loops in each one of the sections. Okay, I went all the way around and I have one loop to do. This is the one that's behind where we started and finished. And look at this, this is what's left. And I'm telling you, if you do nine inches, it's going to be perfect. So let me get my last nine inches right here. Very, very exciting. And I'm just going to put it in here. And then I'm going to cut off my tail, grabbing another zip tie. I'm just going to zip tie it right there to row three. So this is how it looks from the back. There's our beginning. We went around, went in row two, and here we finished. Look how beautiful this is. So I usually put the ribbon on and then I fluff it out, but today, I don't know why, I want to fluff this out. It looks so beautiful as it is. So I'm just going to go in and just kinda open up my rows here and just start fluffing it out before we put the finishing touches on it. When I fluff these, I don't go from the top because I don't want to catch on anything. What I do is I take the bottom one and kind of push it down. So I push it down and kind of right there. I push it down and pull it out. And I found that there's much less, you know, tagging on things and fraying when you do that. So just start with the bottom one and push it down. Look how these are filling in. I mean, if you wanted to, as long as you hide these in the back and just fluff out these sections, I'm telling you, you could have a complete wreath right there. You don't have to go further. That is how much volume these four rolls make. And it's just, it turns out so beautiful. I came up with this method. Now, I don't know if anybody else did it before me because, I mean, it's not like it's something complicated here. But I was just so desperate to find 21-inch mesh and to do this method. So I decided, I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll just use the 6-inch mesh, layer it on, and have the same effect. And I think it's even better because this actually is 24 quote unquote inches of um, of deco mesh in each loop versus the 21. So in retrospect, it turns out even fluffier. And I've even done uh, wreaths where I had three instead of four, turned out fine. But on that one, I did have like ribbon in between, just like I'm going to have on this one. But I'm just saying it's possible. If you only have three rolls of a certain thing, you can definitely try to do this wreath. I'm going to measure out 10 inches for our ribbon. And you can make a board for this and just go around the board and then cut it. A lot of people have done that. After my ribbon is cut, I'm going to do dovetails. And this ribbon is wrinkled, so you might want to just stretch it out and then cut your dovetail. Next, I'm going to cut this silver ribbon. Same thing. I'm going to do 10 inches 
For this ribbon, I don't do dovetails. It's just because it's going to get messy. I mean, you could if you want to, but I don't. It kind of is very transparent, and you're not even going to be able to, to tell if there's actually dovetails on there anyway. So I just tend to cut it at the 10-inch mark, straighten it out, and that's it. The third ribbon I'm going to use is this gold one, and it's kind of on the sheer side. And once again, I'm going to measure out my 10 inches and then cut it, and then I'm going to make dovetails on both sides. Here is all my ribbon. I have 18 pieces of this one, 18 pieces of this one, and 36 of this one. This took four rolls two and two rolls. I'm going to start with my gold ones. Crisscross them and then grab two of the silver ones and then crisscross those and then as usual I like to bring it in, fold it in half and then fold it out in half and then start putting them in between our pipe cleaners one good twist or two and now we're ready for our ornaments to put my ornament on I'm going to put one of my pipe cleaners coming from the bottom up the other pipe cleaner is going to go from top going down like this and I'm just going to pull them and then take them back and then I'm going to do a quick twist or two in the back right here. And then you can either cut them off or I like to just fold them in and just tuck them underneath the wire just in case you need to replace something or something. I don't like to cut them off completely, but it's secure in the back. We're going to straighten this out later. For now, I'm just going to be making my bundles and keep going. And make sure they, they're all swing this way because when we tighten them up, they're going to stand up. We're going to fold it in half towards the center and then fold our sides back. We have a perfect little bow. And as you can see, the silver was very important to bring out the actual ornament. Otherwise, it's just too much gold. All right, we are coming along with this wreath and you can definitely stop right there, but I am going to add these little branches here. They're wired all the way, so I'm just going to snip these and they are easy to attach. If you just put them in and attach to one of the wires right here, I'm just going to twist it here just like that. And then here you just form it the way you want it and it'll stay in place because you have so much deco mesh. You have so many things going on here. So I'm kind of going to go in a zigzag with these. If this one is on the outside, this one's going to be this way. If this one's here, this one's going to be here. So I have one right here. So this next one is going to be somewhere around here. And then when I'm done putting in my little twigs, I'm just going to go around and straighten all of my little poofs out. And that is it for this gorgeous winter glam gold and silver wreath. Before we get started, let's go over the details on our deco mesh. So I am using 10 inch deco mesh and it's 10 inches by 30 feet. We are going to be using two rolls of this mesh and this is the mesh that doesn't have any foil threading on it. This mesh is pretty much the same thing as the Dollar Tree has, 
but it is 10 inches. I got this at Joann Fabrics. And I just wanted to show you. It's pretty much that same type of deco mesh. For pipe cleaners, I'm going to be just folding them in half. So they're going to be around six inches. In case you're wondering why I cut my pipe cleaners into six inches instead of the regular four for the Nadia method, is because this mesh is going to be a little bigger. The bows are going to be a little bigger and we don't need to struggle. We just need things to go nice and easy for all of us, right? So after cutting my pipe cleaners into the six inch strips, I'm going to bend them in a little V. I just do this to make it easier when I bring my bows together. For the 10 inch mesh, I'm going to be cutting my deco mesh into 15 inch strips. Now it's time to make our no free bows. I'm going to let my deco mesh roll onto itself naturally and then just walk my fingers out until both sides or both endings are overlapping about an inch and a half. Once I have that, I'm going to just hold my little tube up and then I'm going to just set it down where the overlapping is smack in the middle. With my fingers on top, I'm just going to hold it there. With my thumb, I'm going to hold the center because we're working with a much wider bow. You wanna make sure that that overlapping stays in its place. So now that I have it, starting from the bottom. So now that I have it, I'm going to just start bringing it together from the bottom. Just coming up, and with my thumb, I'm just kinda helping it along. Now I'm going to use my pipe cleaner here, and just lock it in on this side, two twists. And let's see what we got here. We have the top, the smooth end, right here. We have all the fraying in the back. One side of this bow is right over here and it is locked in with our pipe cleaner and the other side is actually on the inside so there is no fraying it's staying nice and secure i quickly wanted to show you the difference between the two size bows this one is six inches by 12 and this one is 10 by 15 and as you can see this one is pretty much double the size of our little deco mesh from the Dollar Tree but that might just mean that we need less of it and we're going to apply it to our wreath in a little bit of a different way but this bow is so pretty and big I absolutely love the big waves that you see in it and of course zero fraying is a huge plus let's make another one I'm just going to walk it out until it's overlapping about an inch and a half I'm going to just hold it up and then bring it down so that the overlapping is right in the middle. With my thumb, I'm going to hold the overlapping in the center. And with this hand, I'm going to start bringing the boat together. Two twists in the back. And we have our bow. For this wreath, I'm going to be using the 14 inch metal wreath form from the Dollar Tree. Our two deco mesh rolls yielded 50 bows. We need eight bows in each section. So eight bows times six sections gives us 48 bows. So that means we have two bows left over where we can fill them in wherever we want. To attach the bow, you can either put it in row two or row three. I'm going to be using row two and we're going to go all the way around. I got one section done and it's pretty full and don't forget it's going to get filled on this side too so it's going to come up like this and it's nice and full. On the back, the tails are a little bit longer. So what we're going to do is after you give the twists, I'm going to fold it in half. And then you can just leave it at that or you can put it in half one more time. And then push it back and you're going to have a clean little fold right here. 
And it's just, you know, I always do that because those pipe cleaners, they are sharp. So we want to make sure that we get rid of anything that's sharp in the back that could damage maybe gl the glass that it's going to be hanging on or the wood or the walls. So that's why I'm a bit picky about that. There you go. And look how clean this looks in the back. I have one section. It's nice and neat in the back and it's nice and filled in the front. The reason I wanted to show you this wreath is to explain the reason why I'm only using one row to attach my bows on. I'm just using row two to attach versus when I'm doing the Dollar Tree deco mesh that is six inches by 12 inch to make the Nadia Method uh, little bows. Here I go in a zigzag because the bows are much smaller. Because the bows are so big, we can just use one row and I think it takes less time to make these bigger ones because you need a lot less of these than you do the other smaller ones. To decorate you, of course, can do anything you want, but I decided to do the ribbon method here. And what I'm going to do first is grab two pipe cleaners and I'm going to divide these into four inch strips because we are going to do six loops. And the best way to keep this even is have the loops be exactly six like we have the divisions on the wreath form. And so I decided to go with this ribbon from the Dollar Tree here. And the first thing we're going to do is grab one of our pipe cleaners bring the little ribbon together and tie it. So basically this is going to get tied to the wreath form. This tail, we're just going to hide it in the back. Now I'm going to start measuring off 10 inches and I'm just going to tie it off. And by the way, you do need one extra for the ending. All right, now that I have these, decide which way you want the wording to go. I prefer the wording to go towards the inside. And now I'm just going to find the divisions on my wreath form here and attach the ribbon straight to the middle row right here in between rows two and three and just twist it off in the back, fold the endings and fold again. So it's nice and neat. Find the second division and attach right there between rows two and three. There you go. And I think this looks perfect. And so I'm going to go all the way around. Next, I'm grabbing some silver ornaments and these come in a pack of 12 at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to put them in between our little loops over here. I already put one glam on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a sparkly one and then a matte one, sparkly matte, sparkly matte. To attach, you can either use floral wire or I have some of these pipe cleaners left over that were already cut up and I'm attaching it to the same bar where our loops are attached. There you go, and just set it in place. It should hold really well. If you feel like it's not holding, you can always give a little dot of glue in between the ribbon right here and the ornament so it stays in place, but it should stay in place fairly well. Also, some of these ornaments right here, they don't hold that well, so give it a little bit of hot glue to attach and to make sure that it holds in place well. All right, and our wreath is all done. What do you think of this sweet little decor method? It's pretty simple, easy to do.
I call this wreath a basic wreath because when you're starting to make deco mesh wreaths, especially the long 21 inch ones, this is a super easy method to do and I'm going to go step by step and you guys are going to love it. Um, so I have my 21 inch deco mesh here and just to tell you the value of it, yes, I did get it at the Dollar Tree and it is 21 inches by five yards. Here is five yards only, six inches. Both of these are a dollar from the Dollar Tree. So when you get a chance to find these, grab them because they don't last long and I was only able to find these twice at the Dollar Tree because literally the lady was still taking it out of the box. Okay, so here's what you're gonna need. A 21 inch um, deco mesh, five yards. You're going to need two of each ribbon. You can uh, stick to just two, so you're going to need two of these and two of these. And then uh, I am going to put some gold in between because there is gold right here. And then uh, I have a 14 inch wreath form from the Dollar Tree. Then uh, some pipe cleaners. And then I have uh, two zip ties, one for the beginning and one for the end. All right, let's get started. The first step is to set up our wreath form. I got my 18 pipe cleaners and what we're going to do is we're going to put three per section. There's six sections on this wreath form, which means we're going to need 18 of these. Now 18 is going to be our magic number because we're going to need 18 pipe cleaners and we're going to need 18 of each ribbon that we want to use for each bundle. We're going to be using three of these pipe cleaner per section. In section one, I'm going to put a pipe cleaner on the first and second row, right in the middle. Some people hot glue it so it doesn't ride around, but we are going to have this wreath really full, so that's not gonna be an issue. And here, as you can see, I'm putting the pipe cleaner on the third and fourth row. I'm just giving it one twist. So as you can see, there's nothing to get overwhelmed with with all of these wires. You just need one, two, three. That's it. One on the inside, two on the outside per section. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill each section with three of these pipe cleaners. Some people like to start from the outside and work their way in. I like to start from inside and work my way out. Now let's open our deco mesh. And I have to admit that this is absolutely stunning. Look how gorgeous this deco mesh is. I'm just blown away that I got this for a dollar from the Dollar Tree. Okay, so I'm going about two inches in and I like to kind of keep it straight and walk my way up. I got about two inches in tail. I'm opening up my first pipe cleaner and I am going to put it inside, but I am also going to zip tie it to that second row. Now this is for my own sanity. I want to make sure that it's nice and secure. I'm just using some wire cutters, cut that off. And now we're going to start unrolling our deco mesh. For this one, I'm going to be making nine inch loops. As you can see my white right here, that is eight inches. And then I'm going to add one more. So I'm starting with my gray right here and I'm going to go up nice and taut, nine inches. And then next, I'm going to go to the next one here. Bring it down, keep it nice and tight, and do two twists. There you go. Once again, starting with my gray, going down eight inches. And then I'm going to go to the next one. And just staying on that inside row until I go all the way around. My zip tie, and I'm going to go right on top. Give it a beautiful two twists. And I cannot get over how 
gorgeous this is. I mean, honestly, you don't even have to add anything. Look at this. Just poof it out and oh wow. Just so stunning. So next, we're going to go on these outside loops. We're going to keep it at nine inches, just like we were doing. And I'm going to start in that same area, going to one of these right here. And that's going to get opened up later. And it's going to be beautiful and poofy going on the outside of my wreath form, going all the way around I am on my last loop and here is how much there's left so ideally you could do 10 inches but I wanted to stay on the side of caution to make sure I had enough to go all the way around because sometimes Dollar Tree mesh is not the most reliable so instead of going over here and kind of making it bulky I'm just grabbing another piece of wire and I'm going to attach it right next to it not that i have it with attached with the wire i'm going to attach it with another zip tie and then i'm going to cut off my tail okay now i'm going to put my mesh on the side and work on the ribbon as i said our magic number is 18 which means i need two of each to go all the way around and I'm going to cut all of these into 12 inches, but you know what? I tend to go 11-ish, kind of 11 and a half, just because we are talking about Dollar Tree here. And so this, um, this ribbon is kind of like, like vinyl a little bit. I think a rotary cutter would be good. And I'm just going to cut it at 11 inches. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the second one. This one's kind of vinyl on the back also. And I'm just going to stick to my 11 inches. But as I said, this is 9 feet. So you should be able to get 12 out of it. But I just had a lot of issues with Dollar Tree ribbon before. And I don't feel like it's always the exact length that they say it is. So... I just played safe. So next, I'm going to be cutting this gold one up. I'm going to measure the same 11 inches. And I'm just going back and forth here. And I'm going to cut this one with scissors. Okay, I have all my ribbon cut up. Isn't that beautiful? So now the next step here is to make little dovetails on everything. And I'm just going to sit back and make little dovetails on all the ribbon. Now it's time to make our 18 ribbon bundles. I'm going to start with my busiest print. Then I'm going to move on to this pretty little snowflake red. And then I'm going to finish it off in the center with a gold that's going to kind of balance off the gold that we have in here. It's fairly light, but it's going to look beautiful. I just crisscrossed the red, put the gold on top. Then I'm going to bring it in, bring it out, and I'm going to attach it. When I'm done with that, I'm going to kind of push my pipe cleaners towards the back. And then here, I'm just going to twist them in place. And I'm just going to kind of fold it right there and tuck it in. Once again, starting with the busiest print, then the lighter print, then putting my gold in the center. And then I'm going to fold in half towards the center and then fold these halves back out. Just fold it back. And then you have a perfect little bow. And I'm going to continue doing this throughout all the 18 intersections here. And once again, you crisscross, 
gold on top we're going to fold in and fold out I'm going to finish up doing my ribbon bundles and attaching them to my wreath but look at this plain and already decorated it's starting to look full it's starting to look like a professional wreath right and as you guys know I guarantee just to go step by step and you will be able to accomplish this look at that all right I will be right back all the ribbon is on and so our next step here is to finally do my favorite part and it's to open up the actual deco mesh to make my little bubbles and I just find the end on one side and kind of hold everything in my other hand and kind of pull it obviously not hard just pull it to open it and then just fluff it out after doing all of that that is when I'm going to come back and grab my ribbon and just kind of put it the way I want it on the wreath fluff it out and then we're going to be all done wreath form from the Dollar Tree I am going to be using this ivory color deco mesh it has little gold threads in it and I did decide to give it a coat of some gold spray paint and then of course I'm going to seal it with some acrylic coating now I'm going to prepare some pipe cleaners I always cut them into four inch little strips you don't need more than that and then what I do is I uh, make them into little V's. Now that I have my pipe cleaners, all I do is I just kind of find the middle and fold them into a little kind of V shape. It's just easier when you're making the bows. Now for our deco mesh. I'm going to be using a 6 inch deco mesh that's by 5 yards. And if you divide it into 12 inch pieces, you should get 15 pieces out of each roll. I'm going to start with 4 rolls. Before I start cutting it up, I wanted to show you what I look for in deco mesh rolls. I look for a nice even roll like this. That doesn't always happen because you're looking for a certain color sometimes. But if you can, just pay attention to the edges right here to make sure you have a beautiful roll. That way it's just going to make it easier for you. So I'm going to start cutting these into little 12 inch strips. I'm using a rotary cutter. You can use scissors, whatever you have on hand, but a rotary cutter here is um, it's just so much easier. Now it's time to start making our bows. I'm going to keep my deco mesh looped just like it is and I'm going to kind of just walk it out and open it until it's overlapping about an inch and a half. So an inch to maximum of two inches, but don't forget when you get closer to two, you're really taking away from the size of the bow. I'm going to hold it on top, hold it at the bottom, and I'm just going to bring it down. And then with one hand, I'm going to be holding right here with my thumb right here. I'm just going to be holding to make sure that it holds, uh, the overlapping stays in place kind of. And then now from the bottom, I'm going to start making my way up. There you go. When I get to the top, I'm grabbing one of my pipe cleaners and it's kind of easy when it's in a V and just put it right around. And I just fold the bow really quickly and then twist, two, three twists. And there you go, our first bow is done. Let's make another bow. And by the way, Leo is here to monitor me to make sure I'm doing everything correctly and to say hello to all of you. I'm overlapping about an inch and a half here, holding top and bottom, bringing it down. From the bottom, I'm going to start walking it up. With my thumb, I'm holding to make sure that everything stays nice and even. There you go. And this is the smooth end. This is the back end of when we were making the bow. 
bring our V in over here, our pipe cleaner. There you go. Two twists. And now let's look at our fraying in this little bow. Some of the fraying is here in the back and you can hardly see it. It's nice and sealed kind of in the back here. The other part of the fraying is inside the bow. So it's hidden and it's secured. Here you can tell a little bit. But it's hidden and there should be no fraying. It's all held up over here. When I bend it, you can actually see the edging, but it's all locked in. Now it's time to start filling in the bell. And I'm going to start by filling in the top row. And I'm just going to put it around both of these. Or you could put around one of them. It really doesn't matter. So I'm going to fill in these three areas right here. Then we're going to assess the bell to see what it looks like to figure out what we want to do with this bottom portion right here. And I'm just putting the bows on there and giving it a few twists and then hiding the pipe cleaner behind our little bow right here so it doesn't scratch. I am done with row number one and there's 11 all together in this row. Now I'm going to start on row number two. I have three rows done right here. And so we come to this area right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this middle area and I'm going to fill it in nice and tight. If I feel like I need to fill in over here, we can just add a few right there where it kind of expands because this actually, do you see how it goes at the bottom? It goes up and down. So once we start putting the bows on, it should cover some of this, but I'm sure there will be a little bit of space. We'll see how that goes. And then uh, if we have to, we'll just, you know, fit more in. I'm thinking I might use anywhere from 15 to 17. From the top to rows, we have eight left over because it's only 11, 11 from a 15 bow roll. And then here we have 14 out of 15. So we have like nine left over that we can either put right there. So four rolls of deco mesh seems to be like the magic number for this wreath. And I'm glad because if you're going to keep it at that, this wreath is going to cost you $5. And then if you decorate with something you already have on hand, that's even going to go further. So I think this is going to be one of those economical and beautiful, beautiful wreaths. By the way, when you have a bow like this, where you know, even if you squish it together, you see the middle, all you have to do is just open them up and move one of the other bows, overlap them, like this that way you just cover the area up move this to the side and keep on going all right and here is our bell i have 11 11 14 and then 18 in this bottom row right here i'm going to fill in right here at the top with some of the ones i have left and I have five left. And I'm just going to fill in on top. I'm not trying to fill in too much because I do want to decorate it on top just a little bit. But you do need to fill it in to keep the shape. We don't need to make a hanging hook because we got one right there. And there you go. It's a bell shape. And right here, I'm not going to fill anything in in this one. I think it's full enough. It's quite a filled bow, nice and full. Now it's time to decorate it a little bit. For the bell at the bottom, I'm going to be using this little ornament from the Dollar Tree. And the first thing I'm going to do is take the decor off. There you go. It's being held by a little zip tie. I'm just grabbing little clamps that I have. For the paints I will be using, I'm going to be first going in with a darker metallic color. This one is called Rich Espresso and it's by Dazzling Metallics. And then by Folk Art, I have this brushed gold, which is a lighter color. Don't forget this part right here is going to be covered and not shown. 
And so first I'm going to do the edge and it's going to look sloppy. Don't worry about it. We'll fix that. This is just to get to the edge right here. And then from here, I'm going to work down and up. Okay, this dried. I'm going in with coat number two. Now I'm grabbing a shabby brush. And I'm going in for the lighter gold because I want some of that dark to still peek through. And our belt is all done. For the bowl, we're going to make one we haven't actually made on this channel. And I'm going to be using a recycled ribbon. It's a velvet ribbon on one side and it has this gold on the other side. And of course, Dollar Tree has some red ribbon, which you can use for this. But I really, really wanted to use this velvet one. As you can see, I got a piece of floral wire cut off. This is from the Dollar Tree, of course. And now we're going to start on the bow. We're going to make a simple bow today, but it's going to be a little different. The tail and the actual loops are going to be separate. So first I'm going to gather my tail just like this. And in the meantime, I'm just going to clip it. Just let it sit there. For the tail, I'm not going to do measurements because you can make them as long or as short as you want. But mine right here in particular, this one is going to be about 11 to 12 inches in length. And now for our loops, I'm grabbing a piece that's 20 inches in length. Then I'm going to come around and overlap it one and a half to two inches. You don't want to be too skimpy on this part. After I've done that, I find my center and I bring it in. Next, we're going to squish it together and I'm just going to make little accordion kind of creases right here, just back and forth. Let's straighten this out. And then I'm going to grab my wire and I'm going to tighten it. Grabbing another 20 inch piece, I'm going to overlap it just the same, find my center, bring it in. That's pretty even. And now I'm going to start making my accordion. So up and down, up and down, and then straighten it out. And then I'm going to place it next to it and grab one of the wires and wrap it around tightly one way. Grab the other one, type, tighten around the other way. And now I'm going to bring in my tail and then put the wire around that nice and tight there and then the other wire going the other way tighten it up and start twisting it now i'm just going to grab another piece and put it around the center to cover that area up and i left the wire long enough so i can wrap it around whatever i want Now I'm bringing in my bell and I'm going to put the bow on top of my bell. I'm going to attach it to the little loop where the little loops overlap right here and just twist it in place. And then there you go, there's the bow on top. And then at the bottom, we're going to add our little bell that we did. And you can either use a zip tie or you can use whatever you have on hand. I'm actually going to use one of the leftover pipe cleaners. As you can see, I'm not attaching it to the hoop right here because with these wreath forms, I don't always trust them. That's why when I attached here, I also attached to the bar, to the actual structure, just to make sure that it's nice and safe there. And there you go, we have our bell and we have our beautiful bow.
additional Christmas colors for today's wreath. And I'm going to start off with this deco mesh that I got at BB Crafts. It's 21 inches. It's red and green with some green foil and red foil strips in between. Very, very beautiful mesh. Then I have a Dollar Tree sign, a Dollar Tree wreath form, which is 14 inches. Also some pipe cleaners from the Dollar Tree. You're going to need 18 of these for the wreath form and two more to attach the sign. And maybe another one if you're going to do a bow. The ribbon I will be using is going to be this beautiful holly ribbon. One is two and a half inches, one is an inch and a half. And it's going to match our little gnome sign really nicely because it has two little holly and the berries right there this is going to be such an adorable wreath the first thing I'm going to do is prepare my wreath form my wreath form is a metal wreath form that's 14 inches and it has six sections and it also has four rows I always count from inside going out in each of the sections we're going to put a pipe cleaner on rows one and two and I'm going to put it right in the middle and give it two twists and fold it towards the inside of the wreath form. Then I'm going to go to the third and fourth row and I'm going to do two pipe cleaners there. I'm going to twist these twice just like we did and then I'm going to fold them going out. And then I'm going to repeat the same process going all the way around. So just one pipe cleaner right here on row one and two, two pipe cleaners on rows three and four to the sides of my center one. I absolutely love this deco mesh. And I'm going to cut my deco mesh into 10 inch strips. You are going to need 36 strips. So if you're going to do this method using two colors, you're going to need 18 of each color or 36 if you're just using one roll that's 21 inches by 10 yards. As you're cutting your deco mesh, you want to store it somewhere safe. I usually have a laundry basket next to my table and I just store them all in the laundry basket until they're ready to be used. We are ready to get started with the Jackie Weave. All I'm doing here is I'm taking one of my strips and I'm rolling them very lightly. I don't need to make it tight or anything. And then I just kind of gather it in the middle bring it together and I make sure that the ending the part that's going to fray is on the inside then I find my middle and then I'm going to attach it to my pipe cleaner you could do it uh, from the outside or from the inside it really doesn't matter uh, where you start so there you go there is my first little Jackie weave and the tail should be about five inches and so should the top I'm grabbing my second piece of deco mesh and I'm just rolling it. And now I'm going to feed this one through the loop right here. And here is the weaving part of it. And then measure about five inches for the tail. And then you're going to attach the tail to the next pipe cleaner. So this is what we have so far these two are interlocking and we have tails on the sides i've got my next pipe cleaner same thing i'm going to fold it in half and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to put tail to tail I'm going to put it right on top of the tail that we just finished here and we are going to lock it in and since we did tail to tail now we're going to do loop to loop here we go now we're going to feed it through. After we fed it through, get your five inches for the tail and attach it to the next pipe cleaner. I have my next piece right here and I'm just going to do tail to tail. And so now going around, I'm going to continue doing the same thing. I'm going to do tail to tail, then loop to loop and just keep on going all the way around. And here is my last loop. And my last tail and I'm just going to put one on top of the other and we are done with the first row 
look how full this wreath is this is just rows two and three those six pipe cleaners that we did this is just the center now we're going to go to the pipe cleaners on row three and four and we're going to do the same thing just start weaving our pieces of deco mesh roll them up fold them in half and off i go doing the same thing and just weaving it here i'm doing tail to tail so i just put it right on top and now i'm just going to do loop to loop i'm all done with this wreath and look how full this is the center is tiny which means this really filled in nicely look at my hand how tiny my hand looks comparing to this huge wreath and this is just one roll of 21 inch by 10 yards deco mesh i think this is absolutely stunning but the red and the green when they're together they kind of look a little dark so you need to brighten it up and that is why we are going to brighten it up with our sign. You can do one of two things. You can put the sign in the center, do the ribbon around, or you can put the sign on the side and do a big bow. I decided that because this deco mesh kind of gives off this really dark look, I decided that it needed the bright uh, ribbon throughout the wreath. Now I'm just cutting each one of my ribbon rolls into 12 inch strips. And we're going to need 18 strips of each ribbon. I have my ribbon ready to make the bundles. Oh, look how pretty this ribbon is. And it's going to brighten up the wreath really nicely. I'm starting with my two and a half inch ribbon. Then I'm going to bring the gold one and then the other holly one. And just bring it together and attach to my wreath. After I attach with my pipe cleaner, I know I'm not going to be putting anything else in here. So I'm just going to twist my pipe cleaner up a little bit. About an inch from the inside, I'm going to just snap it off, fold it in half, and then fold it back. And I don't really straighten these out until I'm done going all the way around. The ribbon really did brighten up the wreath. And I'm just going around straightening out all the ribbon making sure that everything just lays down really nicely and i just love that this wreath is traditional christmas colors i love holly and i think it just turned out so beautiful now the little addition that's just going to make this wreath pop is my little gnome sign from the dollar tree so let me just put pipe cleaners on this super quick i have the sign right here and this one comes with one of these that have little plastics on the ends you can just poke them through and that's it as far as the little holes i usually don't do anything to them for wreaths uh, big like this because you can definitely just throw a ribbon over it and hide those little holes and now i'm going to take my little pipe cleaners and i'm going to make a little flat surface just using my two fingers some hot glue i'm going to put the pipe cleaner on more hot glue on top and then i'm just grabbing a piece of ribbon whatever you have on hand is fine it's a fabric felt whatever this is just another way of sealing in that pipe cleaner so it goes nowhere and now i'm going to do the same thing to the other side and now i'm just putting the sign straight on the wreath and before i actually even attach it i try to get the ribbon out from underneath that i want to peek through i just covered with this one hole and then we'll grab more ribbon on this side we'll cover the other hole right there and that's it you don't want to squish the sign onto the wreath too much but you also want it to be part of the wreath so you do want to work things around it and just fit it in nicely I have my pipe cleaners in the back and i'm just going to attach them and then i just want to make sure that it's locked in so I'm going to go around this intersection back and forth and then just twist the pipe cleaner. Then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And now I'm ready to display my wreath. Deco 
mesh is going to be this gorgeous 21 inch deco mesh that I got at BB Crafts. Then I'm going to be using this Poly Pro Mesh. This one I got at Hobby Lobby on one of their sales. You will need pipe cleaners, of course. The ribbon I'm going to be using is this gorgeous one. The background here is ivory, just like on here. And then we have this gorgeous green one with the gold. And if you notice, it's this dark green and ivory's not white. So it's going to look vintagey and beautiful. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this plastic label. If you got one of these wreath forms and you notice that it's wobbly, you're not the only one. We all got them. They're not all straight. They're just, they're not. And that's okay. We can work around that. Some people work outside in. I prefer to work inside out. It's just because I find that it's easier to finish up on the edges instead of working the center and all that mesh getting in your way. Okay, so we're going to go every other row. Here's row one, the one in the center, then row two, then we're going to go on row three. We're going to skip row four, we're going to go on row five, and we're going to skip row six. And we're going to double every row we do. So in the first row right here, we're going to do two pipe cleaners. I'm just going to put it through two of these little holes and give it a twist and there you go there's my pipe cleaner and then I'm going to do another pipe cleaner on the opposite side of that just like that we have the first two done then we're going to skip a row and we're going to go to the next one and this next one we're just going to grab two of these holes and we're going to twist our pipe cleaner then on here we're going to skip a hole and go to the next one so we're going to have one little hole in between our pipe cleaners and we should have a total of four pipe cleaners in this next row skip a hole next one and you do want to make sure you give it two twists and make sure it's nice and safe because these holes are so far apart it's ridiculous now we're skipping another row and we're going back one more time and here we go and on this row we should have eight so as far as our pipe cleaners we're going to go two in this first section that we did then four in the next one and eight in the one I'm doing right now which is row five from the center one two three four five six so we're in fifth row same thing here we are skipping one little hole and we're going to the next one and then we're doing our little pipe cleaner now that all my pipe cleaners are on I'm going to lay them down because we are starting from the center we want to make sure that they're just easily accessible so I like to lay them down so we can find them easier as we're moving along but they won't lay down for some reason for me <laughs> they're all still sticking up I wanted to show you a sleepy little kitty that's on here for some of you who have been asking about Leo. He is just sleeping off a little meal he just ate. Say hello to everyone, Leo. He's like, what just happened? Why did you just pick me up? Okay, starting from one of the two center pipe cleaners, we're going to unroll our deco mesh. And of course, we are going to gather about inch, inch and a half. And as you notice, I have it the opposite way than I usually do. And the reason for that is we're going to first attach it to our pipe cleaner. And we are going to make it as tight as absolutely possible. I'm going to do two twists. And then I'm going to bring it over. This is basically kind of to seal it in because it's hard to use a zip tie here because there's just nowhere to tighten that zip tie. Do kind of like an extra loop here. Absolutely fine. There you go. I'm just going to open it up. 
we're going to be making 10 inch poofs and there's a few ways to measure. You could have a special measuring instrument to measure. And if you do, that's absolutely fine. If you have a 12 inch ruler, just grab it where the 10 inches are and just measure your 10 inches like this. If you have one of these mats, I do it by eye. I do it with my 10 inch little square and it starts at seven, ends at 17. It's easier to see it right here. And that is how I kind of measure. I just do it by eye, grab my seven from both sides and there's my 17 right there. And that's it. And now I'm going to go to the second uh, little pipe cleaner in the first row and we're going to make a loop. Making sure that my factory edges are on the sides here. I'm going to just measure another 10 inches and go right on top of my original first one. After that, we are moving on to the second row of pipe cleaners. Let's unroll this. And you are just going to continue spiraling, going around and around. So we are going to have four poofs in the second row. Here we go. We're going to move to the next one. And look how it's filling in already. I haven't really opened any of them. Make sure you keep your pipe cleaners. Give it two, even three twists to make sure that it's going to stay in place nicely. And just move on to your next pipe cleaner. Here you can see if this is full enough, you can move on to the next row. If you feel like you want another one right here, you can definitely come back to where you started and give it another poof. I just feel like because we have that original first one, I feel like it's really full. Doesn't it look full to you? So I'm actually going to go ahead and move on to the next row. And of course, I'm not going to go to the closest one right here. I'm going to go to the next one because these are 10 inch loops and we want them to be fairly um, the same in size, meaning we don't want them to be too close, like one on top of another. And there you go. We're just going to go all the way around. I am on my last loop right here going from this one to the one we started in the last row I'm going to grab where I'm going to connect and of course cut off about two inches I'm going to go in the pipe cleaner right here and then the tail that's left is going to go underneath just make sure that it's nice and tight in that area and of course the next thing we're going to do is just start opening our deco mesh up Start with one factory end, run it to the next one. Make sure that it's open up and we have a beautiful full wreath. So next we're going to grab our 10 inch deco mesh and we're going to lighten this up. On our wreath in the back, it's easier to see, but we have 14 pipe cleaners on here, which means I want 28 of little 10 inch strips of this deco mesh. I'm done with my 10 inch strips and this is how much deco mesh I have left. So it's a little bit less than half a roll, but that is such a beautiful deco mesh. We can use it anywhere we want and I'm sure that we'll use that up. Okay, so I have my rolls right here. I'm just going to grab two at a time and as naturally as it rolls, I'm not going to make it too tight, but I am going to do a curl one either hold it between your fingers or grab a little clip just like that grab the second one roll that and then I kind of crisscross them and we're going to start adding them to our pipe cleaners so find your inner pipe cleaners there you go and we're just going to add them throughout the wreath All right, this beauty is getting filled in really, really nicely. Next step is to get our ribbon ready. We're going to be cutting 12 inch strips, both ribbons, and we're going to do 14 strips each. So 12 inches is right there. Same thing with this ribbon, 12 inches. I have my ribbon cut up and I just cut it like this where I have the two strips. And then I just keep them together, fold them in half, cut at an angle. Same thing on the other side. And I have 
two of these ready to go. And of course, same thing with the green ribbon. It's probably one of the most kissed cats ever. And he takes it like a champ because mama loves giving him lots of kisses, lots of kisses. And of course, some of you tell me to give him a little hug and a kiss. So I definitely do that. Look at him. He's like, yeah, go ahead, ma. Just like that. Now that our Leo break is over, let's get back to the wreath. I'm just going to grab my ribbon right here, crisscross it, gather it, and start attaching it to all my pipe cleaners. When I'm done, I'm just going to twist it and fold it back. At this point, your pipe cleaner should be fairly short. Our wreath is all done. I just made the ribbons really pretty here. And if you want, you can definitely add something in the center or to the side. But I feel like there's so much on there. We have one deco mesh, two deco mesh. We have the really beautifully printed uh, ribbon that just stands out. And I want the ribbon to stand out. I want the deco mesh to stand out. And this wreath is absolutely gorgeous and ready to be put on your door. Today we are going to be using this beautiful Dollar Tree 21 inch mesh and it's five yards like regular rolls at other craft stores are usually 10 yards. So for a dollar, this is really incredible. Okay, um, next thing you are going to need is a wreath form and I was lucky enough to get this uh, neutral one that is going to mash perfectly and this is the 14 inch as I said. First thing we want to do is put the chenille wires on our form. There are six sections in this wreath. So what I'm going to do is one is going to go on the two inner rings. On the two outside rings we are going to put two in each section now let's get our mesh i'm working around a cat over here i don't know if you see this little tail right here <laughs> i'm trying to work around a little kitty over here okay so i'm going to start together i just grab it in the middle and then just kind of roll up and then roll down so you have a nice and even Poof it. I, I try to even it out for the first one. Okay. You can start outside in, inside out. I kind of work my way from inside to out. But what I'm going to do is I like to secure it with a zip tie, especially the first one. So I have it here, but I'm going to also do it with a zip tie. I do this for the first one and the last one, obviously, because... There's no point to do otherwise. When I use zip ties for this, I sleep better at night, I have to admit. All right. So we are making 10 inch loops. I take the beginning and uh, my 10 inch is right here. And I'm just going to grab it where my 10 inch is and I'm going to poof it in kind of, poof it up. And then I'm going to move on to my next one, which is right here, and give it two twists, two tight twists. Okay, I'm starting right here. 10 inches once again, poof up. We're going to move to the next one. Okay, I, I made a full circle. Look how beautiful it is. Made a full circle, and I'm going to continue making my 10 inch poofs. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move on straight to the back and then I'm going to go around the outside continuing with the same 10 inch poofs. Last poof and it's literally 10 inches. <laughs> so I'm going to try to make as little of a tail as possible and that's it. So it was enough for the whole wreath to go around. There you go. And especially because it's so short, I will definitely be using my um, zip tie. And I'm going to zip tie it to the third ring. So it's a little bit on the inside. Oh my God. 
Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <clears throat> Sorry about that. My cat was on top of everything here. Leo. Leo, my little nosy Leo. So now I'm going to go around and just poof everything out. For the ribbon, I decided to use two types of ribbon and this is going to be this gorgeous buffalo check and also this white one. So what we need to do is we're going to cut these into 12 inch strips. I just like using my ruler and then you can just go back and forth. I really need to do one of those boards that a lot of um, DIYers use, but I really just use my ruler and go for it. You're going to need 18 of each ribbon. I got all my ribbon and as you see, I am being supervised by Leo over here. Hi, baby. Say hi to everyone on camera. Say hello, my little pretty. I'm surprised all this light and he could not be bothered. He's like, yeah, whatever, ma. So the first thing I do is I make all the ducktails for the ribbon. I have things falling on the floor because of this little tail right here. But I'm going to cut everything up, do all my ribbon, and then I will be right back. Okay, I cut all the ribbon up. And by the way, if you do like to fold like I do, make sure you fold with the bright side inside because when you tie the ribbon, it's going to unfold. So just kind of inside out or whatever you want to call it. But here's the outside of the ribbon. Here's the inside of the ribbon. And I fold it in before I cut it. Okay. Grabbing one of each. And I just, I'm just putting them together. And... I'm going to tie them on each one of the sections. I'll just give it a few twists there. And I'm going to do this all the way around. So when I do twist, I then pull them back so they're not sticking up because I know I'm done with them. So here too, I'm going to try to twist a few times, just pull them back. And then what I like to do in the back is I just twist it in the back and then just kind of go around until it's nice and secure. Okay, I just did these three and look how clean it is. Clean up here nice up here and then i'll open them up and make them all pretty at the end when i'm done with all the ribbons so i'm just going to go right now all along and put all my ribbon in all my ribbon is on and i'm starting to poof it out and what i'm doing is just kind of doing a little crisscross with the red ribbon and the white ribbon trying to make the ribbon nice and what i do is i'll put the white ribbon going one way and then the second ribbon going another way and then just going along and doing the same thing everywhere i decided to get this peace sign i'm going to give this little board two coats of white chalk paint and this is from crafter's corner from the dollar tree i have my plank it's nice and dry grab two more chenille wires fold them in half give yourself uh, i kind of just do the the two finger thing and that way like i just make it flat and then i'm going to put it on the side hot glue it in place then i'm going to grab my peace sign and just put it in the middle and i'm lightly just putting it on top and i'm just going to use the first two to secure it on one side and then here's the other side i'm just straightening out all the ribbons at this point and i'm going to hang it up on my front door wreath ones they were starting with a 14 inch metal wreath form from the dollar tree 24 pipe cleaners and these are 12 inches and also five rolls of the green deco mesh from the dollar tree and this deco mesh is six inches by five yards 
So when buying Dollar Tree Decomesh, make sure that this is nice and smooth, that you don't see fraying on the ends of your Decomesh. You want to see how this is because sometimes you can tell how bad it is just by seeing how like frayed and ugly it is on this side. As you can see, this one is fairly nice. So I do pay attention when I get my rolls like that. These pipe cleaners or chenille stems are actually from the Dollar Tree. And what I do is I buy a whole bunch because they do come in packs of different colors. You have like gold and silver, red, green. And what I do is I separate all the colors and I'll buy like five packs at a time. I'll separate the colors and that way I have green when I need it, gold, silver, and red. So I'm going to divide this in three since this is 12 inches. You're going to need four inch strips and that's going to be plenty for what we need. And then I'm just going to cut all of these into four inch strips. Now let's go over the basics of our deco mesh. Our deco mesh is six inches in width and five yards in length. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut our deco mesh into 12 inch strips. That's going to give us 15 bows per roll. This wreath form consists of six even sections. We are going to be doing 12 of the little bows in each section. So 12 times six gives us 72 bows. If we're going to use five of these rolls, we're going to have 75 bows. So that's more than enough, giving you three left over that you can put anywhere you want. I'm going to start cutting and I like to use this rotary cutter. You can use whatever you want. You can use scissors and here we go, just 12 inch strips, all five rolls. When you cut the deco mesh, it kind of tends to curl up on its own. So I just let it curl and I just kind of wiggle my fingers right here until it is overlapping about an inch, inch and a half. You really don't want to go any further than that. I'm going to hold it on top, bring it down smack in the center. With one hand, I'm going to be keeping it nice and tight on top right here. With the other hand, I'm going to just walk it up right where it's overlapping. Then I'm going to turn my bow over. This is my smooth end, or it's going to be our top end. So I'm going to grab my chenille wire, fold it in a little V, and then put it right here so that when we're tying our chenille wire, we're tying it in the back where all that little fraying is and it's hiding. So on top, Nice, smooth, absolutely zero fraying. And all the endings are either right here and is kept really tight with my chenille stem. And then on the inside of the bow right there. So you can't even see it because it's on the inside. And that is it. Our bow is ready to go. Grabbing another strip. I'm just walking my little strip until I get to about an inch to an inch and a half overlapping. Bring it down, hold it tight with the other finger, overlapping, and we're just going to bring it together. Grab my chenille wire, make it into a V, and this is my smooth end. This is the center of my little pipe cleaner, and this is the back. We're going to give it two tight twists, it is good to go, a perfect little bow. By the time I'm done making the bows, this one over here, look at this. Look at this, he thinks it's funny. Do you wanna play with the bows? All right, as soon as I get this guy off, and I feel so bad, because look, he thinks he's having fun. I'm so sorry, little one. But yeah, you gotta go, honey. All right, that was so hard to do because he's so dang sweet. 
I got my wreath form. I got all my sweet little bows and there's a little bit more on the sides here. Everything didn't fit in here. Now it's time to put our little bows onto our wreath form. If you don't have enough, I have done these wreaths where I had basically three of these rolls fill in four of these and I'll insert that video in the description box and it works so well but this time we have plenty of ribbon plenty of our bows so we're going to do six and six and fill this up really nicely and it's going to look like a green Christmas wreath for this wreath I'm going to be using row two and three and I just like to zigzag them because of the way they fit. And I'll just go two, three, two, three, and then it'll start filling in nicely. And here is only one section, just one little section. Look how full and fluffy it is. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take the rest of my pretty bows and start filling in the rest of my sections. Now we're ready to decorate. Here is the option I'm going with. I'm grabbing these branches and they have red berries with some white kind of snow frosted going on. And I'm going to be putting them on top, but I'm going to work kind of upside down just because I find it easier to work. And first I'm going to see if any of my branches going a certain way. For example, I feel like this one is going this way. So I'm going to put it on one side of my wreath. This one, I kind of feel like it is going the other way. I overlap them right here, bend them until they're overlapping. You don't want too much space, maybe three inches here. And then grab some floral wire. This is just to bring it together. This is not what we're going to attach it with to the wreath. The way I'm going to attach is I'm going to go between my branch, going in, going down, giving it a few twists, and then this part is going to get attached to the wreath form. Come through the branches, and now I'm going to attach. And I'm going to attach right here at the intersection where you see that bar going up and down. Same thing on the other side. Now that that's attached, this middle part is going to get attached with our bow. Now let's make our bow. Let's measure the tail we want, and I want a fairly long tail. And I'm just making a simple bow with really long tails. And the way I bring these together so they're nice and clean is we're going to fold it in, and then both sides we're going to fold back in half. That way it makes for a very beautiful and clean bow. A little wire here, give it a twist. Now I'm going to go around this bar right here. And this is the way I'm going to attach both florals one more time and then our bow. After this, make sure you move the bows around to cover things up that you want covered. I'm trying to keep this wreath very natural, so I'm grabbing more berries. Now, you can definitely sneak some berries from here because there's plenty that are kind of in the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a little section and Put it right in the middle of the bow. You don't need much of it. And we're just going to hot glue it straight to the bow right there. As I was done with the wreath, I just felt like it needed more loops. So I'm grabbing the same ribbon, approximating the loops, and I'm just going to add them in. I'm overlapping about an inch and a half. I'm going to fold in, fold out, grab a piece of floral wire, and then I'm kind of going to sneak it in behind our branch right here. And then I'm going to add more berries. I'm going to be using the Dollar Tree uh, mesh, but I'm going to be using a method where we loop it around. We have six sections. Each section is going to have three of these chenille wires. And here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to use one section. 
The first chenille is going to go in between one and two and it's going to go straight in the middle. And I'm just going to give it two little twists. Even one twist will do. Here's number two and it's going to go on loop three and four. And then one on this side. Here's one section. We have one in the one, two, and then two in the three, four. Now I'm going to open uh, all four of these up and just stretch them out on my table. So I have them in order, silver, white, silver, and white. Bring them together. I'm going to put it inside one of my middle silver ones and I'm going to zip tie it to the second from the inside loop. I just sleep better at night when I know that my wreaths are nice and secure and this first loop and the last loop that you make are the most important. So I always wanna make sure that it's nice and tight. I'm just going to cut this off. I'm going to cut the tail. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the inside first. So, here are my eight, and the white ones are my ten right here. What I decided to do is more of nine. I'm just, for some reason, I'm very worried that it's not going to be enough. So, I'm going to make nine-inch loops. Starting from where my mesh is right here, I'm going to make sure that the loop is going to be right here so it's facing like it, I can cup my hand in it meaning it's like this so I had just keep it like this measure out my nine inches loop it like this and go in between the silver the next inside one give it two nice twists then measure out my next nine inches this one's just a little bit more of a pain in the booty because you have to constantly untangle, not untangle, un, you know, unroll all the, you know, deco mesh, but that's okay. It's really not a big deal. Okay, next loop right here. I have my nine inches. You can do 10, but I just felt like doing nine just to make sure that we have enough. And now we're going in. And I'm going to give it two twists right here. One and two. And see, it's trying to loop out. I'm gonna loop it back in. And twist all my deco mesh, all four of them. Okay, measure out my nine right there. Go to the next and two twists. Okay, now I'm at the beginning where I started. I'm going to finish off this loop. I'm going to go right on top of where I was. Finish off my loop right here. Make it nice and tight. And just to the second one right here. Right now, they're all sliding right here. You can always give it a dab of uh, hot glue over here if you wanted to. But I don't usually do that just because when you open all of them up, it really is not going to matter. But if you feel like that's uh, something you would like to do to make sure that it's nice and secure and won't move on you, you can definitely do that. I'm just bringing it together and I'm going to loop it on the one that I started going down with. And then I'm going to take this tail, feed it through the second I mean, uh, the, the fourth and third. And here's my tail. And I'm going to zip tie it to the third loop from the inside. Isn't this nice and clean? Cut up the excess. I'm going to open up all of my little loops. I just want to show you the difference. Here's unopened and here's opened. For the ribbon, we are going to do something different. We are going to use this buffalo check from the Dollar Tree. And instead of our usual uh, 12 inches, we're going to do 10 for this. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to measure off my 10, and then I'm going to keep on going until I'm done with the spool of the ribbon. But I'm going to do one right now for us. I'm just going to cut ducktails right away on both of these together. 
Okay, so here's how we're going to do it. One is going to go straight. The other one is going to go a little cross. And then this one's going to go on top. Then we are going to prepare any ornament. And we obviously need 18 sets like this. So what I do is I start, inst uh, instead of just putting them together and, you know, different people do it differently, I'm going to bring it together right here. There you go. This way we kind of make a little bow and it's crisscrossed and it's going to be beautiful. Let's go to the center. We're going to put it in. On one of the chenille wires, put the ornament, feed it through, and then hide both of the chenille wires in the back, twist them, secure them, and you're all done. Now we just have to play around with it when we're all done and make it all pretty. But look how beautiful it turns out. A little bit of sparkle from the silver ribbon. Bam. How gorgeous is this? And we're just going to go around the whole wreath doing this. So this is the wreath right now and I felt like this is more than enough. I did not want to put anything else on there. today's very cute and simple candy cane wreath we're going to need a candy cane wreath form from the Dollar Tree three rolls of deco mesh that is six inches by five yards then some mesh tubings and this is like an iridescent clear to a white then some pipe cleaners and some sort of a measuring device I'm going to be doing eight inch loops so I'm just going to be using this little board from the Dollar Tree so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my pipe cleaners into three these are 12 inches so I cut them into four inch strips the mesh tubing is really long and much longer than your rolls of deco mesh. I'm going to find the beginning and the end. Now I'm going to unroll my deco mesh. Next, I'm going to unroll and overlap my deco mesh. Roll number three. I'm going to give it about an inch, bring it together. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my candy cane upside down. It is rounded. That's the top. So right now it's going in and you'll see why we need to do that in the beginning. And now I'm going to just zip tie it to my candy cane. You can also just use the pipe cleaner, but for my first loops, I just feel better when I zip tie them. And I forgot my tubing, so I'm just going to go ahead, grab another zip tie. I'm just putting my zip tie right next to the other one, putting my mesh tubing right there, and locking it in. It happens sometimes, guys. It happens sometimes. All right, now that we have everything, I'm going to turn my candy cane the right side up. Now my candy cane uh, actually is, you know, rounded on top. My tubing, there's plenty of it. I'm not going to make it loose, but I'm not going to be pulling it either. All right, let's measure our eight inches right here. Gather it. Make our bubble. Then grabbing a pipe cleaner, going to attach it to our candy cane wreath right here. And then we're ready to just start making loops. I'm attaching my loops to the second one. You could do it to the third one. It really doesn't matter. In the first section of our candy cane, I have four loops that I made or four poofs. And then this one is our fifth one. So kind of five all together in the first one. And then we're going to make a few in this one. 
in this section right here in the second section even though it's the smallest section I'm going to have four loops or bubbles because it turns right here you want this area to be nice and full i'm on my last loop so before i do that i just wanted to give you the numbers of the loops or the bubbles that i have on this wreath so i have five including this one then four in this little one then five and then five that's going to include my last loop and by the way this is what's left pretty much and I'm just going to do my last loop and I'm going to attach it upside down kind of like what we did with the first one. I got my 8 inches and instead of attaching it on top, I'm going to bring it around. Even give it a little bit more if you want. And then I'm going to zip tie it right there. Now that we have our candy cane, I'm going to go ahead and start opening all my bubbles up. And of course, I'm going to let my mesh tubing sit on top of that. When you do layered mesh like that, you don't want the edges to catch. So the way I do it is starting with the bottom layer, I push it down. I push it down and out. Down and out. There you go. And then um, I want my nicest mesh to be on top. So I'm going to push down and take the other one to the other side. And then, of course my tubing right on top. I'm going to continue doing this all the way around and then I will be right back. I'm going to grab this ribbon and this is the one with the little trucks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to make a simple four loop bow. We're going to put the ribbon kind of in the center of the wreath right here towards the top. I'm just measuring for my tail and I'm just going to do a few loops. And I'm not measuring it in no particular way. And then another loop. Then I just kind of bring it together. We have two loops. Then find my center. Bring it in. Grabbing a pipe cleaner. There you go. Making sure that's my center. Two twists. Measure out my tail here. Find the place where you want your bow to be. And don't push it down too much. Keep it on top. I'm going to cut these on an angle. For the tails, I'm going to use the banner method. And what that means is going to do a little wave. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to fold this ribbon halfway through. I'm going to fold it up and pinch the corners. After I pinched my corners, I'm going to take these fingers right here. And I'm going to kind of push as I'm pulling it down. This way we're making a loop right here. So it's going to make a loop and this little ribbon and it's going to be really pretty. It's going to give a little dimension and it just looks really pretty. Once again, with my fingers right here, I'm kind of pushing it up and in. So I'm making a little loop right there for the center of my bow i decided to use a little flower this is from the dollar tree and as you can see this is leftovers from last year but i'm just going to take this little flower and i'm going to hot glue it to the center right there i'm going to cut this off a little bit but not all the way to the end because i don't want it to fall apart and just be really generous with my hot glue here and put it in place bubble technique was originally started using 21 inch mesh and when I realized how hard it was to get at the Dollar Tree or impossible in some cases I started doing this where I'm just going to use three different ones and we're going to get the fullness of a 21 inch deco mesh. I actually love this because you can choose colors you mix and I just think it makes for a beautiful wreath. To get started we're going to roll them out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a white one on the inside, green in the middle, and then a white one on the outside. And when I roll them out, I make sure that they roll naturally. So they curve in instead of rolling out. Next, we have the green. 
and then we have the white. About an inch in, I'm going to start gathering it. And then I'm going to connect it on one of these connections. And I'm going to do that with a zip tie. I'm going to take my tail and I'm going to put it in between rows two and three. And by the way, the way I count my rows are one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to go in and attach it at the intersection here. There you go. I connected it right there at this little, what I call, intersection. And now it's time to make the loops. I'm going to be making eight inch loops. And I use this board from the Dollar Tree because it has eight inches right here. And it's kind of perfect. You can, of course, use whatever you want, but I do like using that one. And we already have the formation of the bubble because of the way we laid it out. So let's grab our eight inches and then bring it in. And you can attach it to row two or three. I decided to attach it to row two. And this is going to be a little bit of a whimsical little wreath, but I think it's going to be beautiful. So I'm going to give it a few twists and then I'm going to bring these to the back. Another eight inches. All right, and here's one section complete. I'm going to go ahead and finish these two sections and see how much deco mesh we have left over. I'm done with my first three rolls of the deco mesh. In each section, I have seven loops and I still have a little bit left over, so I'm going to grab it right here. Since this is the last loop for this deco mesh, I'm going to connect it here with a zip tie. I'm cutting the tail off, leaving about two inches, and I'm going to just shove that on the inside here. Next, I'm going to lay out the next three rolls. We're going to bring it together. Because I ended this one on row two, I'm going to go to row three. That way we can have an unnoticeable transition here. Here in the back, I'm going to overlap them just like this, and then we're going to move on and you're not going to be able to see where one section ends and another one begins. And then I'm going to go back to row two and start attaching them. Before I go on, I wanted to show you that I do like to keep my back clean and this is what it looks like and I'm going to show you how I do it. When you have these two sticking out, I'm just going to give it a few twists in the back. And then I'm going to take this tail that's left, fold it in half, and then tuck it on the inside of the loop. I'm going to do another one. We have the tails right here. Give it two twists. Then I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to fold it back. And that is how you're going to have a beautiful and clean wreath in the back. I'm going to finish that off later. Right now, I'm just going to continue making the loops. All right, I already have seven loops in this last section, but I have a little bit left over, so I'm going to use it anyway and make an extra loop. And since this is our last loop, let me go in the back here and show you what I'll be doing. And I am going to be using a zip tie. And now it's time to open my wreath up. The best way to start is to start from the inside going out. From the inside, I'm going to take the white and I'm going to push it down. I'm going to push it down. This will prevent fraying as you're separating them. And then I'm going to push it down again with the green and move the white to the side. And then the green one's going to be in the center. The white one's going to go on the inside, then the green one, and then this white one is going to go to the outside. And I'm just going to continue doing this throughout the whole wreath. And you already see a little bit of what this wreath is going to look like at the end. I'm going to continue doing this all the way around and I'll be right back. All right, I am done fluffing out my wreath. I mean, we can continue playing with this to make sure it's 
the way we want it later. Not a big deal. It's not supposed to be even and all of that. It's just supposed to be all whimsical. So on this beautiful green, what we're going to do is we're going to hot glue some of these pom-poms. The first thing I'm doing with my little pom-poms here is I'm separating all the white ones. Now it's time for our cute little gingerbread uh, man and woman. These are so adorable. I'm going to take the tags off super quick. And then I'm going to decorate these just a little bit. I'm going to start with the little gentleman. I'm going to hot glue some of these little green pom-poms onto his hat. And then I'm going to grab the lady gingerbread. And all I'm going to do is on her bow right here, I'm going to put a little center. There you go. I think that one will be perfect. I think it'll be so cute. There you go. I'm going to put them side by side. They're going to be holding hands. They're going to be so cute. Okay. So the way we're going to attach them is I'm going to grab a 20 gauge wire this is the floral wire and i'm going to set them up how i want them and i want them to be like this so we're going to go through the backs and these 20 gauge just gotta wiggle it in there you go and then we're gonna wiggle it out just going to flip them in here and they are going to sit nice and tight if you need to you can also attach them on top but i'm just going to grab my 20 gauge wrap it around the wreath form right here. I'm just going on the first row. Same thing here. Now it's time to decorate the sides. This is optional, obviously, but I thought it would be so cute to have these little pom-poms on the green here and there. And I'm hot gluing them straight to the deco mesh. Starting with the big ones, I'm going to spread those out and then work my way to the smaller ones. And then just these tiny ones here and there and i just feel like these little things just add a little bit of cuteness to our little wreath here today's wreath i'm starting out with this 14 inch metal wreath form from the dollar tree 18 pipe cleaners and now the deco mesh the deco mesh the ribbon everything i have on here i will list in the description box and where i got everything today we're doing the double poof method and for this method i like to use two rolls of 10 inch deco mesh and this is the method where we're going to go in the spiral going from inside going towards the outside and we'll go through how we're going to do that later but right now I want to talk about the deco mesh. I like to use two rolls of 10 inch deco mesh with very contrasting colors and your deco mesh should be about five yards long. For the background deco mesh I like using just any deco mesh I have on hand. This one has very fine netting on it. It really doesn't matter. It's going to give you that red background. The deco mesh that's going to be on top of the red is this gorgeous golden one that I got at BB Crafts and look how it's weaved. It has this space in between. I actually choose this deco mesh on purpose for this type of wreath because it's going to show show the background color together it's going to be gorgeous now let's go through the ribbon that we're going to use I'm going to start with this Dollar Tree ribbon I'm going to grab a few rolls and it's a nice and thick ribbon but it does not have wire on the edging and it's red green and this ivory kind of gold and it's going to look beautiful with the deco mesh that we're going to be using. Next, I'm going to grab a gold ribbon. This one is one and a half inches wide. The last ribbon I'm going to use is this beautiful 
one and a half inch ribbon that has little cardinals on it and it has all the colors that I need. It has red that will work well with this beautiful ribbon and with our deco mesh and then it has gold designed all over it which is going to bring everything together now let's get started on the wreath if you've never done this this is one of the easiest things you can do and i actually was intimidated by this when i first started making wreath because it's just you look at this big old ring and it has all these pipe cleaners coming off of everywhere and you know what here's what we're going to do we're going to put our first pipe cleaner right there on rows one and two and since this wreath has six sections we're going to just put one in each section on row one and two as you can see when i'm putting these pipe cleaners on i give it two good twists and then i actually fold them down and towards the inside of the wreath form. This is just going to be easier to grab them as we're working along. We are done with this first row and we have six in this row. And now we're going to grab two per section and we're just going to go towards both sides, the left and right of the center one that we have in each section. And so we're just going to have two per section and we're going to put them on rows three and four this is what each section is going to look like one pipe cleaner on row one and two and two pipe cleaners on both sides of that on rows three and four so you're going to have three pipe cleaners per section multiply that by six sections and you're going to have 18 pipe cleaners let's prepare our deco mesh i'm starting with the red one and i'm just unrolling it and then this gold one is going to go right on top. I unrolled my deco mesh just like it's going because I want the poofs to be natural. And I'm just going to go in about an inch and a half to two inches and gather my tail. Before I attach it to my wreath form, I'm going to just show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to attach it to the first pipe cleaner and then I'm going to make 10 inch loops. The loops are going to go from one to the next on the inner row until my first row is all complete and we're back where we started. We're going to attach it on top right here. And then in order to go to the second row, we are going to jump to the next section and grab this first pipe cleaner in the next section then i'm going to continue making my 10 inch loops going all the way around when attaching it keep in mind that this is going to be kind of bulky so i like to kind of just squish it down right here and give it two good twists i know that my deco mesh is nice and secured but i'm going to grab a little zip tie and going about half an inch to an inch from where my pipe cleaner is right here zip tie it first of all it's going to just give it a little extra security knowing that my uh beginning and i'm also going to do this at the end is nice and secure and the second thing this zip tie is going to do is straighten out this little tail now we're ready to make our poofs as i said our poofs are going to be 10 inches and my 10 inch is right here this light square on my board so i'm going to grab the beginning of my pipe cleaner measure my 10 inches and we're going to just attach it to the next section same thing measure out our 10 inches and grab our next pipe cleaner when i'm making wreaths i want this to be fun and i want this to be easy and this is why everything that i do i try to make it as least complicated as possible but we're going to get that professional look at the end of the day I went all the way around and my last poof is going right where we started right here by this first loop. And now I'm going to measure my 10 inches once again. And we are going to jump to this outside row and not in the section that we're in, we're going to jump to the next section. 
And then here on out, we're just going to be doing 10 inch loops going from one pipe cleaner to the next. And that is another reason why I like these sticking out because I just grab the next one and keep on going right along. I went all the way around, completed my last loop, and I did not go back to this first one that I started because I felt like it was full enough. As far as the tail, I cut it off about two inches from my last pipe cleaner and with my zip tie about an inch from the pipe cleaner, I just zip tied it all together and this is going to get hidden after we poof everything out. Plus don't forget, we're still going to have ribbon all over. I did want to show you how elegant this deco mesh is and I love the fact that you can see that background or I call it the base deco mesh underneath. Now I'm just going to open up my bubbles just making sure everything's kind of nice and I'm going to do this going all the way around on this inner row and the outer row. Now it's time to cut our Dollar Tree ribbon and I usually like to cut this one no more than 11 inches because it doesn't have the wire so anywhere from 10 to 11 is okay. So I'm going to be cutting mine into 11 inch strips. Next I have the gold ribbon. This is the one and a half inch ribbon and I'm going to measure it out at 12 inches. Now I'm going to grab the next one and a half inch ribbon and this one's with the cardinals and the same thing. I'm going to cut it into 12 inch strips. All my ribbon is cut up and I have 18 of the gold, 18 of the one with the cardinal and 36 of the two and a half inch one from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to just go ahead and cut dovetails on all the ribbon endings. Now it's time to take this wreath to another level by making our little bundles. So I'm going to take two of the Dollar Tree ribbons and just crisscross them. Then I'm going to grab the gold one Put that on top and then the one with the little cardinal. I want the prettiest ones to be on top because I want that to show real nicely. And then I'm just going to bring it all together. Grab one of my pipe cleaners and give it two good twists. And we have our ribbon on. For the center, I decided to do an ornament and I can either do this larger one and these come in a pack of 12 from the Dollar Tree or the smaller one that come in a pack of 16. And so I can either have this or that. I think this one looks a lot better than the tiny one. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that your ornament is on this little plastic part nicely. If it's not, then just give it a dot of hot glue. Then I'm going to take my pipe cleaner. I'm going to put one going from one side the other pipe cleaner is going to come up to the opposite side and I'm just going to pull it just like that. And then I'm going to take my pipe cleaners to the back of the wreath and tie them in the back. And now I'm just going to do the same thing, repeat that same process, two ribbons from the Dollar Tree, then my little gold one and then my cardinal. Bring it all together, squeeze it in, and put it on the next pipe cleaner. And then I'm going to grab a matte ornament because this one was glittery. These ornaments are sold where they're glittery, matte, glitter, matte. So that's how I'm going to put them on my wreath. I'm going to go around the outside and do matte, glittery, matte, glittery, and same thing on the inside. So I'm just going to continue doing this, going all around our wreath until all 18 pipe cleaners are filled with ornaments and ribbon. I'm done putting on my bundles. Look how gorgeous this is. I know it looks a little messy, but now I'm just going to sit back and just make sure that all the bundles are nicely laid out on the wreath. This is so much fun. I absolutely love this part. Now that the bundles are on, we are just going to pretty this wreath up. And my wreath is pretty much done. Look how beautiful and full this wreath is. At this point, you can definitely be done with your wreath. It is so full, look at this. There's just no space even in the center. It is beautiful, it is 
full, but I found a little Santa picture that I really wanted to use. And the little holly matches the holly on the ribbon right here. It's going to cover some of these bundles, some of these ornaments, but I don't even mind because I think this just gives another dimension to this wreath. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this ribbon right here grab two pipe cleaners, fold them in half, and I'm going to make a little flat surface on both ends. And then just grab two pieces of ribbon. I grabbed the cardinal ribbon I already had on hand. Some hot glue, put my pipe cleaner on there. More hot glue, and I'm generous with my hot glue. Then our ribbon, and this is what's really going to seal it in, is that ribbon being on top of there. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. And now I'm ready to attach it to my wreath. I'm going to straighten out the wreath one more time and make sure some of the ribbon kind of covers the edges right here, especially the hole on top. And just straighten it out. And now we're ready to hang our wreath. Some new deco mesh from the Dollar Tree I bought just yesterday so just to compare to a regular roll from the Dollar Tree it's six inches this is ten inches but check this out this one is five yards this one is ten yards it does feel strong you guys I have to admit there's a piece of tape on there okay probably on this side too but it's not as soft as regular deco mesh and it is a little bit more porous as you can see meaning the squares are a little larger so i'm a little worried how it's going to affect my wreath here but we are going to try to do our best and see what we can do with this type of mesh because this is the first time i'm using this so that's why i'm a little weary so i'm going to be using a 14 inch metal wreath form from the dollar tree okay so here's what i'm going to do i want the ombre effect of the mesh to be shown so either it's going to be like this or it's going to be like this i'm not sure how i'm going to open it yet but for that to happen what i'm going to do is i'm going to face one one way and the other the other way meaning Here's me unrolling it. Do you see that it's practically just like invisible? I'm a little nervous now, you guys. And so the other one is going to go this way, okay? This is going to be a little hard because this it's, you know, the way it's rolled. That's all, all right. We'll see how it works. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring it together. First thing I wanna do is I'm going to zip tie the little bundle I'm going to just push it through and I'm just going to zip tie it at the crossing right here between the second and the third loop from the inside and I just like to kind of do it literally on that little crossing making sure we have plenty I know I'm going to have enough mesh because I mean 10 yards better be enough but the question is how big do we want our loops and how thick? So I usually, for these, I do about eight inches. And I feel like for, because this is so open, eight inches is uh, basically the maximum to go with because if you go any higher, then it's going to be a more poofy, but open wreath, okay? So let's do eight inches, which is my white section right here. Loop it in bring it in so basically we're going to put our chenille wires whether you're using a full or a half on the second and third like this so here we go i'm going to measure our eight inches poof in make sure it's poofing in and then i'm just going to 
loop it. And a half is more than enough. Do you see this tail? It's more than enough. Even if you're going to put like ribbon in or something, it's still going to be enough if you're going to be doing that. So far, so good. I don't know. I'm going to finish the first section and then we'll see what it looks like. Okay, since this is the first time I'm working with this, I want to open up the first section to see if I have enough. I'm just so worried that it just, it's so kind of like, it's so see-through. So I'm going to open this up, see what it looks like. Pleasantly surprised. It looks thick. I cannot see my, my wire form, which is always my goal is to make sure that when I'm making these, that the wire form is, you know, covered. I'm not sure what we're going to decorate it with, but the way I opened it up is because of the ombre effect. I want the dark to be on the outside and then the light to be on the inside. Because this is a winter wreath, I wanted the light blue on top. This could actually be a really pretty kind of baby shower boys uh, wreath too. Um, the short one is just fine because you're going to loop it and then bring it in the back over here and This big one. What are you gonna do with it? You're still going to just kind of twist it and then cut it off. So it's just a Good idea to do it um, To cut your chenille wire in half. So one two three four five six I'm going to continue doing six loops on each of the sections. I wanted to take a second and show you exactly how I tie each one of the loops. I'm going to measure my eight inches right here, make sure it's looped in, and then here we go. I'm bringing my half of a chenille right to the center top, giving it two twists or at least one. Then I'm just bringing them back in the back right here and in the back I'm just twisting them twisting them until it's just you know twisted together and I'm putting it down and that way you have a nice clean kind of you know beautiful wreath in the back I'm going to fix everything I haven't done you know in the back but that's all you do and so far this is looking absolutely gorgeous this part is open and then this part is mixed but you can definitely leave the wreath just like this but I wanted the ombre effect so I wanted my dark blues as you saw before in there and the light blue on top all right Time to continue with this party and I'm going to finish up the three sections right here. Okay, so here's the last loop and I'm going to just, let's see here. What I like to do is I like to overlap them and then zip tie both of them to only one of the loop so I'm going to zip tie it to the second one that way it gives it a stronger hold nice and tight ooh love it all right cutting off like the strays are the ones that are really sticking out I have to say I'm uh, I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of this uh, mesh, but I love the fact that it is a, you could do an ombre effect. And when you're doing a loop bow, look at this. So easy, so beautiful. Now you could tell that this is where I spread it out. If you take a look, you really almost don't have to if you wanna keep the loops. I particularly, don't feel like keeping the loops because I do want more of an ombre effect. I want that dark blue um, to be hidden on the edges and to keep the light blue on top. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to finish opening up the wreath all the way around and then we're going to start decorating. All right, so I decided to put the snowflake in the middle of the wreath and it's quite large. I wish it was a little bit smaller, but that's all right. We will make it work. The first thing I'm going to do is grab some spackling and cover the little hole. Ooh, I like this. I'm grabbing the Battleship Gray and I want to literally dry brush it all over the snowflake. Right, 
so I decided to write Hello Winter on here with some Scrabble pieces. I finally got some and these are from Magic Fly. I'll give you guys the link down below and it's a thousand Scrabble pieces and I believe it was around $20 but look how cute this is. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. Alrighty, so I'm somebody who likes to be accurate. So the first thing I'm going to do is center my snowflake. Decide how you want it. Maybe you want this at the point. I want it kind of even on all sides. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to grab any Scrabble piece. And I want to find my middle. So I have the middle right here and the middle right there. There you go. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the L because that is in the center. So you just decide how big or how small, how far away you want these. And I decided to use this blue stick right here. And that is going to be my spacer in between all the letters. When I put it on the wreath, it just seems like something is missing. All right, you guys, and we are ready to attach. Right. What I like to do is fold it this way. I have my wreath ready to be assembled and almost done. I'm so excited. All right, just wiggling my little threads here. And I'm going to do it to two, let me see here. I'm just tying it to the first and second ring. And as always, I start out really, really loose, just in case it doesn't look right when you actually attach, or maybe you're pulling too tight on one side. So just do it loose for now. We can always tighten it up and then see how it looks. And here is the wreath hanging on my front door. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new to this channel and love Dollar Tree DIYs and wreaths, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell button. Are going to make a super cute wreath so we are going to be using the poof method for our deco mesh and my deco mesh is from trendy tree then we are going to need some pretty little ornaments or something for the center of the bundles that we're going to make we're going to need 18 pipe cleaners for the wreath form and two more to attach our board next you're going to need two zip ties for the beginning and end of our deco mesh as we're putting it along the wreath form as far as the ribbon, I'm going to be using this gray wood one. It kind of looks like wood and it'll match the background of our actual sign. And then this white one that is just going to brighten everything up. This one I got at Joanne Fabrics, the gray one. And the white one is from Costco. The wreath form from the Dollar Tree is 14 inches in diameter and it does have four metal rings on it. It is also divided into six sections. The first thing I'm going to do is put pipe cleaners on the inside two rings. So I'm just going to put it in the middle of each section. And I'm going to grab rows one and two, put the pipe cleaner on just like this, on row one and two, and I'm going to face the pipe cleaner towards the inside of the ring. The next two pipe cleaners in this section are going to go on the outside, and it's going to go on row three and four, and it's going to go to the side and side of this middle one that we have in the center. And the pipe cleaners that we're attaching to row three are going to be facing out. When you're done with your wreath form, you're going to have six pipe cleaners on the inside two rows. And the outside two rows, you're going to have 12. This is going to give you a total of 18. And now I'm just going to continue going all the way around, putting three pipe cleaners in each section. If you wish, you can put a little bit of hot glue on your pipe cleaner. I find that the pipe cleaner that is foiled, it just it, it doesn't hold that well 
the one that's kind of fuzzy that you get like at Michael's or any other craft store, um, those actually hold on well when you hot glue them to the wreath form, but these foiled ones, they just seem to pop off. Here's the little paper from my packaging, and in the back it shows you a little bit of instructions for, this looks like more of a swag that they're showing you, but it's still kind of cool. I've never seen that before. But anyway, so our deco mesh is 21 inches by 10 yards, which means you can do two of these wreaths with one roll. I always want to mention that because that goes into the cost of the actual wreath. And because five yards is enough for this method, you should be able to get two wreaths out of this one. So I have my beautiful deco mesh and look how foiled it is. It's very pretty. And we're going to go in about an inch and a half to two inches and gather the tail. Because this deco mesh is so long, I always like to go in and kind of straighten this part out to make sure that everything is in before I tighten it up. Because this is the most important part. You want to make sure that everything is safe. There you go. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach my little tail to one of the inside pipe cleaners. And I'm going to just go in and do two twists. Before I go on, I wanted to show you what's going to happen while you can still see the pipe cleaners. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do 10 inch loops going from pipe cleaner to pipe cleaner. We will first go around the first row until we come back and our last loop here is going to be from this pipe cleaner to the one we started with. My next 10 inch loop is going to go from this section right here to the rows two and three to this pipe cleaner, but I'm not going to do the pipe cleaner in the same section. I'm going to jump over to the next section so you have a nice loop. And then from here, I'm just going to go 10, 10, 10, going all the way around until I come back. And then here, you're just going to see if this is going to be pretty full, you can end right here, or you can make that extra 10 inch loop to finish off where you started. That all depends on how full your wreath is and how you feel it looks. So after my tail is connected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my zip tie and I'm going to go off from my pipe cleaner about an inch and tighten that in. As you can see, what that does is just straighten out that little tail at the end and of course give it more security. My 10 inches is this light square right here. So I'm just putting my wreath form at the edge of it and I'm going to just Keep it nice and tight, get my 10 inches, and put it on the next pipe cleaner. You have a lot of deco mesh, make sure you push it all down, and then just two tight twists, or three, and then I'm going to face this up so that when we're ready to work with it, I can find the pipe cleaner. Same thing here, put it in the beginning, measure my 10 inches, and we're going to go to the next pipe cleaner, push everything down, and two tight twists. And I'm going to do this going all the way around. I'm done with my first row. So now I'm going to measure my 10 inches again. And as you can see, I'm where I started. I'm going to go to the next section and this first pipe cleaner in the next section is where I'm going to attach. And then I'm going to go all the way around. I'm on my last loop. As you can see, I could go right here, but I don't think that's necessary. I think this one's going to open up really nicely. So what I decided to do, I'm going to finish right here I give it about an inch and a half to maybe two inches cut it off then grab another zip tie and I'm going to zip tie about an inch away from my actual pipe cleaner make this nice and tight so it's secured in place cut this off and then I'm going to face this little part to the back so nothing scratches my sign is quite large, so it's going to actually go over this inside row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ribbon on the outside row. This inside row, I'm just going to twist the pipe cleaners about an inch from the connection. I'm going to just cut it off, fold it in half, and fold it back so it's nice and secured. And I'm going to go around and do this to the six pipe cleaners on the inside row only. The next thing I'm going to do is go around and open up all my poofs. Now that my wreath is gorgeous and poofy, it is time to work on the ribbon bundles. Both of my ribbons are one and a half inches in width. And as you can see, this one's wire edge and so is this one. When using one and a half inch ribbon, I cut at 20 inches. When using two and a half inch ribbon, I cut at 22 just because I feel like it works with the size. Here we go. I'm going to measure off my 20 inches 
For this wreath, I'm going to need 12 20 inch strips of each ribbon. Same thing with my gray ribbon. I'm going to measure off 20 inches and I'm going to need 20 strips. The way I folded my ribbon was basically I zigzagged it going up and now to cut it, I just grabbed two. In this case, I got the tail, so I'll just grab the three. Fold them in half and do a quick little cut on the edge. And you have your dovetails done at the same time as you're cutting the strips. Same thing with my gray ribbon. Fold it in half and cut from inside going out. My ribbon strips are all cut up. I have dovetails on all sides. I'm ready to make our bundles. I'm going to start with my white ribbon just because it's going to give that beautiful contrast. Then I'm going to put this gray one on top and then I'm going to grab one of these ornaments and the ornament is going to go right in the middle. Let's get started with our one loop bundles. I'm going to fold my ribbon in half and then to find the center, I'm just going to fold it in half again and give it two pinches right here so I know where my center is. I'm going to grab my second one and do the same thing. I'm going to fold it in half and then in half and give it pinches right here to find my middle. When I have one loop going up, the second one is going to go towards the other side. So tails up, tails down. Then I'm just going to pinch it and attach it with my pipe cleaner. When I attached it, I'm going to grab one of my ornaments and then one pipe cleaner is going to go on one side. The other pipe cleaner is going to go on the other side and you're just going to pull it. At this point, you could pull the pipe cleaners back or you can tighten on top. I feel like in this instance, it's better just to bring it back. Give it two nice twists here and just kind of fold the ends and fold them back so you have a clean little connection right here. As far as opening this up, my white ribbon doesn't have a front and the back. The gray one does. So as you can see, my gray one has a seam right here. What I'm going to go is I'm going to go towards the center and just give it one twist and this way I have the tails right here I have the loops right here then another loop right here and this tail I'm just opening it up just like this pretend like you're making a little flower there you go and you have a beautiful loop and tails with a little ornament in the center then moving on to the next section I'm going to do the same thing my white is always going to be at the bottom so I have my white and of course I bent it and then I'm going to have my gray fold it in half fold it in half again and I'm going to put it this way and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this one upside down so that instead of the white loop being up the gray loop is going to be up squeeze it together put it on give it two good twists grab an ornament one pipe cleaner going through one side the other pipe cleaner going through to the opposite side and we're going to pull them bring them to the back and tie them in the back next I need to take care of the tail that needs to flip this gray one that has the seam going up I'm going to go as far to the center as I can give it a quick twist and then just bring the tails out then I have my loop the white tails and the loop of course and I'm just going to go all the way around and continue making my bundles. All my one loop bundles are on my wreath and good news you guys, Leo approved. And so now what I'm going to do is because these little ornaments are Dollar Tree, you have to hot glue them. You have no choice. Otherwise they might pop out at probably time you don't want them to pop out. So I'm just going to go around pop these guys off a little bit of hot glue all the way around pop them back in and that's it I'm going to do this to all my little ornaments now I'm grabbing my sign cutting off the little ribbon and I'm going to put pipe cleaners on grabbing two pipe cleaners I'm going to make a little flat space in the middle just using my two fingers and then what I'm going to do is grab a piece of ribbon a piece of fabric whatever you have on hand grabbing my finger protector now and now I'm just going to Put a good chunk of hot glue and it's best if you use gorilla hot glue just because it's the strongest more hot glue as you see i do not skimp on that and then put your little fabric or whatever you're using right on top and of course make sure that your fabric is fully attached to your sign I'm going to give it a little bit of hot glue on the sides even i really want to make sure that this is on securely now it's time to attach our sign to the wreath I'm going to flip my sign and i always like to attach my signs 
between sections on the wreath form so i'm going to put one side of my pipe cleaner on one side the other one on the other one whisk it around next i'm going to adjust my sign and then i'm going to go in the back of the wreath and really tighten up those pipe cleaners so that it sits in the spot that i adjusted it to the little holes on top i like covering up with the ribbon bundles so right here i'm just going to grab this gray one fold it over just like that boom it's gone you can't see the little holes now i'm just going to straighten all my pretty bundles out and we are done with this gorgeous and super cute oh dear christmas is here wreath basics for this wreath i'm starting with three rolls of deco mesh and usually two rolls of 10 inch by 10 yards would be enough but this one is not actually 10 yards it's 18 feet so it's a lot shorter that's why i'm using three rolls next you're going to need some pipe cleaners you're also going to need a metal star wreath form. This one I got at the Dollar Tree and it's 13 and a half at its widest point, but it really doesn't matter which star form you're going to use because we're using the Nadia method and the 10 inch deco mesh, which means our little bows are going to be quite big and we're just going to use them on this middle row. When using the 10 inch deco mesh for the Nadia method, I cut my pipe cleaners in half because it just makes it easier. And then I'm going to grab them and fold them in a little V that helps me grab it and put it straight onto the bows as I'm making them. This deco mesh is burlap, but it also has this foil little strip and then it has a fabric strip. So that's the reason I'm actually going to use scissors because my rotary cutter just keeps on getting caught on that fabric. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut our deco mesh into 15 inch strips let it roll naturally and put it to the side I'm just going to continue cutting my little strips until I'm done with all three rolls now let's make our bows I'm grabbing one of our strips and just like it curls in naturally I'm just going to kind of wiggle it apart until it's overlapping about an inch and a half I'm going to pinch it on both ends and then I'm going to bring it onto my table vertically, set it down on top right here. I'm going to hold this in place with my thumb. I'm kind of holding that center. And then with my right hand, I'm just going to walk it up. Just like this, I'm going to turn it upside down. This is our smooth end. Grab a pipe cleaner and I'm going to put a pipe cleaner right over it. And then I'm just going to push it back and tighten that pipe cleaner so we have a nice seal there. And there you go, our bow is all done. Let's do another one. Just like it is, I'm going to just make sure it's overlapping about an inch and a half. Grab it on both sides, place it down. With this finger, I'm going to hold it in place. With my thumb, I'm going to hold the center in place. And with my other hand, I'm going to start walking it up. Then I'm going to flip it and put my pipe cleaner on. Now I'm just going to push back my pipe cleaner and then give it a few twists. And our bow is all done. Look how gorgeous this is. My bows are all ready to go. And I'm just going to put them on that middle row in the star. I find that it's easier to put the bows on from the back of the wreath. So that's what I do. I just bring my little tails through, give it two twists or three or how many you want or more. And then <laughs> I'm just going to fold the little tail in half and then fold it either back or behind the actual bar right here locking it in place and just move that over and I'm just going to continue going and filling in the star. Mm -hmm. 
this is getting filled in so nicely and in each little section I'm finding that four of these bows is more than enough and don't forget that this is burlap bows so if you're using a deco mesh that's a little lighter I would maybe recommend doing anywhere from four to six just see how it's filling in the biggest thing I was worried about was this tip showing because from row two to row three it's quite a distance right here but in the back as you can see I only have one bow that's actually at the top and it's covering up that tip really good if you're going to be using thinner deco mesh two at the top will cover it but it looks like one of this one is covering it it looks so pretty I'm going to continue filling in my star and I'll be right back the decor that I decided on is this gorgeous poinsettia. I got this at the Dollar Tree about two years ago and I just opened it up really nicely. The center is not that well made. It's kind of, um, it was too tall. So what I did was I kind of brought it back, made a little kind of V right here. I kind of brought it back and then brought the petals up a little bit. So they fill in that space nicely and then just open the petals up the way I wanted them to be. This flower does have a little clip in the back, so I'm just going to put it through the wreath, and in the back I'm going to just bend it and attach it to one of my wires. The way I hooked it up in the back is the clip is all the way in, meaning the teeth are in front of the actual wire so it's on really nicely and then I'm going to put my little twine to hang the wreath right there so it's going to hold it fine and I'm just grabbing some jute cord and I'm making a little loop right here and that is how I'm going to hang this wreath. To take it a step forward, you could take some vase fillers from the Dollar Tree and these are just those white ones and just kind of spread spread them throughout and there it's an option i decided not to go with it i think the flower alone is going to be just an elegant look to the wreath but you can definitely grab these vase fillers and uh, just hot glue them throughout the wreath For this wreath, I'm going to be using the standard 14 inch metal wreath form from the Dollar Tree. Then I got some pipe cleaners and then the deco mesh that I'm going to be using. I believe I got this one at Walmart, but this one is 21 inches by 10 yards. First things first, the pipe cleaners, I'm just going to fold them in half and cut them. About two inches in, I'm going to start bringing it in. Once you gathered your deco mesh, we're going to attach it to the wreath form. I'm going to go in between row two and three, just push it through, and then I'm going to grab a zip tie and I'm going to tie it on that little intersection. I'll show you in just a second. Once I zip tied it, I'm going to move it to the back and this is where it is attached. I'm going to cut this mess over here for this wreath, I'm going to be making 10 inch loops. My 10 inches is this brown box right here. And when I do these, I just make sure that I have my little loops. Everything is going up and around here. And then I'm going to bring my wire in here and I'm going to be doing row two. And here I'm going to just go around, give it two good twists. These sparkly um, pipe cleaners from the Dollar Tree, they really are strong. They have good wire on the inside. I actually really like using them. And then after I do my twists, I'm just going to send my little tails in the back and twist them there. Okay. 
I'm done with one section. And if I pull it back to where just that one section is, look how full and big it is. That is why I'm saying that 10 inches is more than enough. Here in the back, as I always do, twist it in place, fold it in half, and then fold it back. There you go, nice and clean in the back. And as you can see by my pipe cleaners, there's six loops. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm telling you, this is 10 inches. Look how full this wreath is. I'm telling you, just one section. It means it's going to get squished even more. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this whole wreath, just making 10 inch loops and six loops per section. I'm about to make my last loop, just to show you, this is what's left. And of course, because this is our last loop, I am going to use a zip tie and I'm just going to zip tie it to the second row from the inside. Cutting off the excess tail. And now I'm going to proceed to open all of these up. For the centerpiece, I'm going to be using this little wooden round. It's fairly sturdy, but fairly thin. It's light. You can find these at the Dollar Tree, definitely at Michael's. And it's six and a half inches in diameter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a coat of some white chalk paint. Next, I'm going to be using these felt letter stickers from the Dollar Tree. These are really cool. They stick to paint really, really well. And as you can see, I spelled out Happy New Year. And I'm just going to lay it out. And just glue them right on. All right, now that I have them laid out, I'm going to start from the middle and kind of glue them out. That's how I usually just do anything to make sure everything is centered. See how strong it is? This thing is going to hold really well. For the border right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make little dots. So a tiny bit of black, like really tiny, tiny. Next, I have this metallic brushed gold by Folk Art. And then the only silver I had on hand was this artist loft silver, which matches my nails. For the gold and silver, I will be using Q-tips and you just need a few, not that many. And then for the black, I'm going to be using a tip of a paintbrush. And this is a tiny little tip because there's so much black already on here and the wreath is black. I just wanted to more kind of have it stand out. And of course, because it's tiniest, I'm going to do this last. Starting with the gold. You don't necessarily wanna do a pattern because you want it to be a little bit, you know, sporadic. Now the silver. And now for the black, just dipping it in. What do you guys think? The paint is still wet, so I'm going to let it dry. But look how pretty. I'm absolutely loving how this looks. Now for the sign, I'm just going to turn it over and I'm going to hot glue um, some pipe cleaners to the sides right here. Ideally, you do want pipe cleaners to match your wreath, so black ones would have been preferred, but I don't have any black ones. As usual, I made my little U-shaped thing right here. I'm going to put it right on and put hot glue over it and it will hold super super well and now it's time to attach our sign and i'm just going to attach it to the first ring from the inside here and as always i'm going to go in really light just to make sure i'm in the right spot and then if i decide i like the way it looks then i'm going to come back and tighten it up and now for the decor you can either grab silver and gold ornaments. Those would look really pretty. But I decided to go with something smaller. I'm going with these vase fillers. I'm going to grab the silver ones and I'm going to hot glue them straight to the deco mesh. Next, I'm grabbing these vase fillers and these are like the iridescent white and gold. And these are really going to match our little sign. As far as the vase fillers, you can put as many as you would like. With a black background, you really don't need that much because the colors are bright and they stand out on the wreath 
nicely. I did not put the number of the year because I want to use this wreath over and over again throughout the years. So I'm just going to keep it like this and I think it's absolutely beautiful. Wow, I know that video was long, but if you're still here, thank you so much for being with me. I appreciate you spending some time with me and watching my wreath tutorials. If you enjoy videos like this and are not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and of course the bell so you are notified every time I post a wreath video. Here are some more video ideas if you're still in a mood to watch some wreath tutorials. And I will see you in my next video. Have a beautiful and blessed day, everyone. Mwah.